Hey everybody, welcome to the Players Take, episode 287. I'm your host, Justin DeSimone, joined as always by my co-host Montreal Rice. Montreal, how are you doing this week? Uh, it's been a pretty pretty busy busy week. <laughs> busy. A busy week, but uh busy week. Yeah, but uh I'm I'm getting through it. How about you? Um yeah, similar getting through it. Um I have uh the last like day rediscovered uh, my love for Whose Line Is It Anyway? Did you ever watch that <laughs> okay. show back in the day? <laughs> yeah, I used to watch it all the time. Like, oh, my like, Friday fucking, or whatever. Fucking God, dude. Uh, it show's so fucking funny, man. Like, uh, so I just, I've been like, I've been like fucking watching clips on YouTube, me and uh, Amanda. <laughs> and uh, it's just, it's just fun, man. They're, it's such a fun, funny show. Like, they're, they're so good at the fucking improv. Like, it's crazy sometimes. But, um, so I've been, uh, been kind of enjoying that the last day or day or so but um otherwise just just been gaming mostly so um did uh had all had some stuff to do this past weekend got my yard done had been kind of putting that off for a few weeks um but uh got that taken care of so we're into the we're kind of it feels like we're finally going into the fall so hopefully the yard not having to do it as often and, and even when we do it's like it's not going to be like a fucking 105 outside so um can oh, actually do you guys water your dying. grass yeah we do okay um, that's why we don't we don't i mean liana's like a, a bit of an environmentalist so we don't really water our grass um we just let the rain take care of it so when the grass is dying it's because it's not raining so <laughs> <laughs> i mean uh we'll probably turn the we usually turn the sprinklers off in uh, early october early to mid-october okay um and then turn them back on in like March, usually. So, um, yeah, no, she's a she's a, a which we call it the entire way through, you know. So but you said you got the like tall grass in your backyard, right? Like, well, no, I talked her down. So okay. uh, <laughs> you're not you don't have like a snake infestation no, or like no, giant no. tarantulas running around no. out there. No, uh, I had to. I'm actually uh, this weekend. I got to spray the yard for ticks and fleas again. I do it every season every six seasons or six seasons every six months yep. and um i gotta do it again because deli has been going out there lately and i just don't want her to get a tick or you know fleas or anything like that so mm. even though we give her flea and tick treatment already you yeah know, we kind of double down on outside as well gotcha well we yeah. uh we also have uh some visitors in our backyard <laughs> Uh-oh. we have a uh a little litter of bunnies uh, was born oh, okay. in, uh bunny made a little little den in our uh in our backyard and there's like uh there's like four of them i found them i found them mowing the yard uh we found the nest last week and there was nothing in there like we looked but we saw like bunny fur and like you know grass and stuff that the mom had like put over it yeah. <clears throat> um so we looked and there was nothing in there there were there, there was no babies or anything so we were like maybe this was like a nest they were thinking about and they just abandoned it or whatever but um, I was doing the yard and I was mowing in the backyard and um, I left that section for last. And then I ended up, I went over it. I just made sure that the wheels kind of like were on the sides of it and everything. And I just went directly over it. And then uh, I turn around and I look and there's, I see movement <laughs> in the little, in the little spot. And I'm like, I'm like, Oh fuck. Oh, um, so I go like lift it up and the, yeah, there's like four, like, dude, they literally look like field mice. Like I straight up, think they were born the night before like friday this past friday um they were they were tiny their ears were like mice ears like they did not look like rabbits at all um so obviously they're rodents so they look similar when they're born but um but yeah so they've they've been there for uh five or six days now and uh we we've been like uh you know my wife is like super fucking excited about it she loves she loves the bunnies but uh, we've been like checking on them because we actually got rain this week, right? A couple of days, first couple of days of the week, and uh, mm-hmm. that is actually really dangerous to newborn rabbits because the 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 little nests will flood um, and they can't do anything about it. Obviously, so mm-hmm. we uh, we covered it with a chair and put like an umbrella over it so that the water wasn't going in <laughs> or whatever. So uh, so they're fine. They made it through. We still got them. They're they're growing. Um, they're actually getting to the point um they might because they, they start early on like they just their eyes are closed like they literally don't even open their eyes um they're getting to the point though that they might 
we think they might be opening them soon. So they're getting bigger too. Like they're they've noticeably gotten larger uh, over the course of last week. So um, and we caught her. We couldn't. We we hadn't seen her, the mom, uh, until a couple of days ago. I caught her uh, night out there. Um, I think she was going to feed them. And I was just going to check on him, and uh, she, I saw her like run across the yard, and then uh, grab the flashlight, and yeah, she was she was sitting there waiting for me to leave. So, um, so yeah, that's that's been fun. That's actually our third bunny nest we've had this summer, which is funny because we've been in this house for six years, and we've never had this happen yet before. So. Um, yeah, they have to be coming from somewhere, so something's getting tore down somewhere. Yeah, or I don't know. Like, I don't know what it is about our yard. Like, it, I mean, our yard's quiet. There's no animals, um, and we don't have any, um, you know, we don't have people over or anything like that. So it's a pretty quiet backyard. Um, mm-hmm. It's also pretty open. You know, there's nothing, like, covering it or anything. There's no trees back there. So um, they seem to like it for whatever reason. But yeah, we had we've had two nests before this. The first one uh, was it like in May or June. We caught it really late, uh, actually, uh, and we saw them when the bunnies were about to leave. Like they were big enough to kind of get out on their own. Um, we saw one of them outside of it, <laughs> and then we saw we we saw the rest of them in there. So uh, that one quickly was gone. And then the second one, uh, we never actually saw them, but we think uh, we have a, a couple neighborhood cats that run around. Uh, we think they might have got in and found them when they were like newborns and and might have might have killed them. So that one was sad, but uh, this one, you know, this one we got it, we caught it from the get go. So uh, so it's been it's been that that's been fun, you know, to have little <laughs> little visitors in the backyard. So um, so yeah. yeah, from time to time I forget you're a bunny person because oh my god, pet, they're so fucking cute, dude. <laughs> they're so fucking cute. They're like the cutest animals. Like they. Uh, but th- I mean, obviously these are wild bunnies, so they're not like, um, they're not domesticated. Like they're, they, they will not let you touch them if they're, you know, grown or anything like yeah. that. Um, but the babies can't do anything. So, you know, you can pet their little heads. They have these like little tidy tails. <laughs> they're <laughs> super cute. Um, so yeah. Um, so that, that's been fun. I mean, my wife is the reason I'm I kind of turned into a bunny person cause she had a rabbit when we uh, got together. So, um, but they're uh, they're they're uh, they're interesting because you would think uh, a cat would be more effort than a rabbit to take care of, but that is not the case. Rabbits are take a little bit more effort than a um, cat because you can't let them free roam; they'll just chew your furniture up. <laughs> um, yeah, I so never you... thought bunnies were uh, hard to take care of. I mean, easy to take care of. They use... Animals like that to me are like super hard. They look super hard to take care of. It's usually the cute ones that are like really hard to take care of. So. Well, they're fragile. Number one, um, they're very uh, sensitive, like to their diet. Uh, you can't actually feed them too many fresh vegetables. Like they can't digest it super well. Mm-hmm. Um, so you can't feed them too much, like lettuce and carrots and stuff. You got to like really be careful with that. Um, but the uh, the main thing with them is like, you know, if you have them in a cage, which most people probably will, you have to clean the cage pretty much weekly. And that is a humongous undertaking. Like um, it is like you got to clean the whole thing out. Basically, you got to soap and water, you know, make sure it's super clean because they're they're uh, they have a litter box in there that they'll they'll take care of. But, um, you know, there's all the hay and everything they've had and all that stuff in there. So, and plus the food that you're giving them and water and stuff. So it's just, it takes, it's a lot, it's a lot of work. So cats are so much easier. Just dump the litter and <laughs> give them food and water and they're good usually. So, yeah, but, uh, anything, uh, anything else going on in your life? Uh, <laughs> no, not, not yet. Okay. <laughs> so. Not yet. Are you anticipating something? Uh no, I'm just I don't okay. know. I feel like something's gonna change. I don't know. Oh, okay. Yeah, gotcha. Not like in a good way, not in a bad way or anything. Like okay. That. Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. <laughs> um. All right. Well, let's uh let's get into the show proper here. We got a we got a pretty uh we got an f- interesting show this week. Um. So for those of you who haven't listened before, this is our weekly show. Where we talk about video games, video game news, and other topics pertaining to video games. We post at six a.m. Central Time on Fridays on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher youtube and your favorite podcast app of choice and if you'd like to send us a question you can do so on twitter at the players take or you can send us an email to the players take zero one at gmail.com 
All right, Macho, let's not uh, let's not mince any more words. Let's just get into the show proper here. Talk about what we've been playing. Uh, I guess I can start. We'll start with the league talk. Um, not much to say here. I think the yes, only thing I'm going to say surprisingly, I have nothing to say about league. Well, okay, <laughs> I, I I'm gonna I'm gonna mention. I, I think I know why. Because I is it just me or has this last week been insanely like like we have won an absurd number of games in this last week. Like we've been yes. winning constantly. Like, I don't think we've had a night. Like I think last week we talked about how horrible it was, you know, like we were losing every fucking game, you know? And yeah. then this week it's been the complete opposite. I feel like we're like 25 and five in our last like 30 games or something. You know, you know what? I was looking at that. Um, Cause my, my client was still open, not my league client, but my uh, other client that I used for league was still open. And yeah. I, th- I think, uh, we have won like almost all of our norms games. I mean, there's a couple that we lost, but yeah, like it's been it's blue for blue for win and then red for loss. Like I see a lot of blue and then yeah. a few reds scattered here and there. But uh, yeah, yeah, I don't know. Like you know what has, that I, means, right? You know what that means. The, I guess the pendulum's about to, the, no. Oh, the, no, the, the pendulum's, about, pendulum's about, to about to swing the other way. <laughs> Uh, I'm just waiting for the night the hammer drops where we have like five horrible losses in a row, you know? Um, yeah, I mean, I don't know. Maybe they're maybe they're matchmaking work. I don't even want to jinx this or whatever, but maybe their matchmaking is working. Uh, finally. Maybe we're getting better, to your point. I don't know. Yeah, maybe um, we are getting better. I mean, we have been playing against like platinum people as well um, yeah, and weird. winning those games. Yeah. I mean, I feel like I'm getting better, but I'm not like, I'm not going to sit here and say that it's like significant, you know? Like, I'm not, I don't feel like it's any. I don't know. I guess I'm tilting less is maybe the thing. I'm I'm playing a little more calmly, maybe, and that that does make a big difference well, when you're playing yeah, league. And so I think uh I think we all, especially since like the last couple of weeks ago, I stopped I've stopped blaming the you know the hacker and cheater thing, and I'm just like yo like I just got to get better or whatever, and whatever right. the case may be. Um, but yeah, especially like last night was a prime example of how we just. We all just kind of we were complaining about it, but we all kind of focused up, and then we won oh, that yeah. game. That was you know, amazing. We were we were getting dominated. Like. No, and the whole time I knew we could win the game. I'm <laughs> I was pissed off. I was pissed off not because I felt like these people were cheating or anything bullshit was going on. We were just we were just we were playing dumb. We yep. let them back into the game because the early game we were dominating. Like me and Jet were fucking dog walking this Ash and the 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 uh, Brom dude. Uh, she was like, oh, and three. I'm like five and oh, I think I had like a 30 or 40 CS lead on her. And I remember thinking at that point in the game where I'm like, man, I couldn't have had a better start. It's great. That's this is crazy. I, I I wonder what it would look like if this turned around and then it did turn around. And it, I was so fucking mad about it the whole game because I'm like, I'm like, bro, I'm literally like I literally couldn't have had a better start to this game. And we just kind of gave it away, you know, like salty yeah. came and had a bad gank that ended up with all three of us dying and none of them died and the ash got like all the kills and uh, i think herm like ported down there and just kind of died you know <laughs> yeah. like at one point and i'm 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 like bro like the, and then all of a sudden the ash has more kills than me i'm um, still behind on me on farm it took her a while to overcome me on the farm part it's not like i had let that go but you know eventually she did because she had an item advantage and like they had more map control and they had lane prio and shit and i'm just I'm like, bro, this ass sucks. The Brom sucks. These players are bad. Like, this is like, we're better than these people. Like, we should be able to win this game. Yeah. Um, yeah. And uh, to the team's credit, we didn't tilt. We didn't like, you know, we didn't lose our cool. We we played it right. We won some key fights. We won a couple dragons because we were down 3-1 on dragon, right? I believe. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then we ended up tying it up 3-3. I don't think we ever got to Seoul. Um, no, we never got to Seoul. Uh, so, but we ended up winning two dragons back to back that were huge fucking wins in that in that game. Like that, they were like super key. And then I I started getting a lot of kills in these fights. The enemy team, for whatever reason, was not focusing me, and that was enabling me to like kind of pick apart their squishies, which was really good. And eventually, got I got to the point where I could actually kill Malphite and uh, Brom pretty easily uh, as well. And uh, if they didn't focus me. Um, and at that point, the game was kind of 
over for them because they weren't team fighting very well. It was just a lot of um, they just had an advantage. They had a, they had an insane gold advantage on us when I was looking at the graphs. I was like, oh my god, <laughs> like well, how did like, they lose this? <laughs> well, like you said, they had a, they had a really good um, squad to catch people out, so we mm-hmm. couldn't split push because we were too afraid yeah. of the Rengar or the right. Malphite or the right. Vex jumping on us. Right. Um, <clears throat> but once we decided just to group up in team fight, like they should have ended the game when they rushed our base that one, they rushed yep. our base and they should have yep. ended it there, yep. uh, but they didn't. And then, uh, yeah, it was two fights that det- determined the game. So it was one where they did, they, they poured it in. I think the Vex and the Malphite mm-hmm. actually poured it in and we killed both of them and the team, the other teams, the other three people were still doing their other thing or whatever. Uh, and then, it happened again. Uh, at it happened Baron, again outside Baron yeah, Pit. Yeah. Exactly happened at Baron Pit where, um, yeah, they tried to. They actually altered Jet because he's Timo. They altered him and didn't do anything. They didn't even kill him. And then you well, they came didn't, in they didn't up. kill him. And the I caught the Vex with my W. Um, and like like Malphite was in front of her, and then he backed off and and then behind her, and I caught the Vex with my W, and she she you you guys fucking blew her up after that. Uh, and then Malphite was by himself and couldn't do anything, you know, at that yeah. point because he he didn't have his ultimate. Um, so he just got fucking destroyed, and then the rest of the team trickled in after that, and they were fu- they were fucked, dude. Like it yeah, was five v exactly. three at that yeah, point, just, and then we, we won the game ended, off that. Yeah, we just ended the game immediately. Um, um, but they were so wait. mad that Malphite was so angry. <laughs> well, even <laughs> even the times we go into rank flex, uh, like when the one game we did play in rank flex, we were playing against a platinum fucking top laner. Um, oh no, he was diamond. He was diamond. Yeah, that was the diamond that... detector joke, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the diamond was detector diamond wasn't going on. against her, and her was beating his ass on top. And, uh, yeah, we won that game. It was crazy. And there was another game, though. He wasn't, he, I think he was platinum or whatever. And it was a Pantheon. And he was going against Herm again. He was, he's actually beating Herm, but he kept roaming. And he was, he was affecting the map that way. And then we just decided we just kept farming, and then we decided to uh, team fight, and we won that game too. So I don't know. I mean, I think we're just getting better. With uh, I will say I am proud of you. One thing, you've been you. I mean, Jets are boy. You've been standing up to him though about like just doing random shit. Like even yeah. when I'm down there playing with him, I noticed that he's just like super fucking aggressive. I'm like Jet, we gotta, yeah. we gotta. Yeah, dude, he did it. The it wasn't state, in that game. Bro. It wasn't in that game. Dude, he's literally level one. The the first wave just crashed into each other. Like we're like we haven't killed a minion yet. And somebody walks up to the to the uh to the to the bush he's in and he hits him. He's Sona. He hits him and I'm as I'm level one as, right? <laughs> um he hits him and we I'm I'm auto attacking too. We get him kind of low, but like Jet like goes into both of them. And tries to get the kill, and he's like, "Oh, he's like mad at me that I'm not like coming up." I'm like, "Bro, it's the first wave. Just accept the fact that we did ninety percent of this guy's health and damage, and that he's fucked. Like, we should have pressed that, not tried to get a kill." Like, yeah. So, you know, I think I, that's the thing uh, yeah. he needs to learn. Like, so I was actually teaching him because I was like, I was, I watched a couple of those like, um, those videos or whatever from skill cap or whatever. And mm-hmm. I think the reason he, he started doing that is because when we were down there in the bot lane, I taught him like, we need to be parallel to each other. And then we also need to acknowledge when they're not parallel to each other, catch one yeah. of them out over there. That's like right. how you win skirmishes and stuff like that. So mm-hmm. that's how we were winning our skirmishes and everything. And I think he took that like, too, too far, far so, in that situation. Yeah, yeah exactly. So like, <laughs> like we don't have it, our full kits yet. You know, it's like I well, can't. There's nothing I wrong can't... with doing that, right? But he needs yeah. to learn how to accept a trade, not a kill. Like you need to learn yes. trades. Like yeah. we, you guys clearly won that trade. There was no need to. No, you know, dude. Yeah, it's as clear as day. That guy would have had like ten percent of his HP. I'm full health. Jets full health, and the support is there. Full health and mana. Like that is an amazing trade at the beginning of the game. That that ADC is fucking fucked bro like he can't step up like like he he's totally fucking screwed because i'm ezreal i'm gonna poke the shit out of you if you let me so like you can't like he was one or two cues away from dying at that point you know you're gonna use your potion and maybe get up to 25 percent hp or something like that but 
that kind of disadvantage, if he had to go back to Fountain, he's going to come back and we're level three, you know? You know, it's like, and that that is an insane disadvantage for the ADC at that point. Like, um, we had a game where that happened, where the support did that early. Uh, we didn't kill her, but she had to she had to leave and come back. And, dude, they never came back from that. They never recovered the entire laning phase. It's like, that's how big of a deal that is. So, like, that, and I remembered that in that moment. I'm sitting there like, we don't have to confirm the kill here. Like, the goal would be nice, but it's going to enable me to free farm, you know? So it's like, I'm, I'm probably going to make up that gold difference anyways. It's like not that big of a deal. So no, I, I know I just, you know, I'm not, a, I'm not big on confrontation, but sometimes like, man, that one got me. Cause I'm like, bro, I'm as level one. Like I have a Q that's it. <laughs> if there's minions in my way or the enemy supports in the way, I'm not going to be able to hit the guy, you know? Um, so it's just, you know, I don't know. So I yeah, gotta, it's, it's, it's pretty, yeah, I mean, I think we just need to learn the real. That's why I actually like when he plays engage supports. Uh, yeah. I think he knows how to back off. I, 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 I personally think his his best support. He he doesn't play her anymore, but it was real. It that was, was be, that was his best I support. Know. Yeah, I, and I love I think, when he plays real. Yeah, man. Like, uh, it's funny because I feel like with Leona and Sona, he's still trying to figure them out. Like, I don't think yeah. he's all the way there because dude, he misses Leona's uh sword throw a lot Mm -hmm. (laughs) you know i think he just doesn't get the range he doesn't have the range quite memorized yet on it like i think he feels like it's a little longer than it actually is yeah Uh, and then sona with sona he man he was missing ults like crazy last night (laughs) it's like (laughs) i was like damn dude like i was like fuck bro i mean it didn't matter in most cases but um you know so i mean it's it's like to be honest like i think to become really good with a champion i think in my pool of champs, there's I probably play about six ADCs, but I'd say I'm really good with two of them, Varus and Jin, and that's it. Like I'm I'm not putting Trist in there, I'm not putting Vayne in there, I'm not putting Ez in there, like I'm not like I Kate, I'm not putting her in there. Like I can play those characters, but I'm not like I don't understand them. I don't have their intricacies all the way down, you know, the way I do like with Varus and Jin, it's almost autopilot at this point, bro. Like I'm just like I I, I understand how to play those characters, you know. Um, I think Jin, I was a little weaker with, um, until recently I've really started to like utilize his whole kit to its fullest extent. Like I've started using the traps very, uh, a lot more effectively. Like I always have multiple traps down. Like I'm making sure it's not just sitting on two, you know, most mm-hmm. of the time, yeah. uh, I like to always have one available generally if we get, you know, dove on or something. But, um, <clears throat> if I have, if I hit the two, like if the cooldown hits two, I'm throwing it somewhere. Um, I usually put it, I try, I throw it in the river. Like I'm, I'm making sure we're covered and dude, the, I, I didn't realize how effective it was because it says stop so many ganks. <laughs> uh, it's actually kind of crazy. Uh, the second the jungler hits it, they're out. They don't even want to bother. Like they, they, they don't, they don't actually try to press it cause they can't, um, the move speed reduction, uh, is too much. Like they're, they're by the time they would get to us, we're under the tower, you know, if we see them. So, um, so I I found that to be a lot more effective. I'm actually using it in combat a lot better too. Like if an enemy is chasing me, I'm throwing the trap in front of them. You know, to, you, at a minimum, you're diverting them off their path. You know, um, mm. but if they hit the trap, well, then all of a sudden you you're opening up potentially. You could W them, get a couple autos in, and then you know if they continue to press, you might get a kill off it. So, um, so I feel like I've gotten a lot better with Jin. Um, but Varus has always been my like he's like the he fits like a glove. <laughs> you know, I just I just I don't know. I just bro, it's like. It's actually kind of crazy sometimes when I when I'm when I'm playing him and I just like I, I catch somebody and they're they're dead before they even blink, you know? It's like they're it's he just does so much damage, you know, it's fucking bonkers. His combo is so effective, so um but yeah. It's fun. League's fun. We're having a good time. I'm sure next week things will have turned the other way and we'll be talking about how much the game sucks and blah blah <laughs> blah blah blah. So I'm not um, gonna talk about the game at that point. Yeah. <laughs> uh all right enough about league um other games so uh, i've been continuing to play symphony of war um the nephilim saga uh so i got to chapter i think i talked about last week i was on chapter 20 or something like that i actually haven't made that much progress story-wise i'm on chapter 21 i think but when i beat chapter 20 that opened up this whole like new uh thing like new content uh, a bunch of side quests opened up and 
Uh, I've spent the week pretty much getting through all of that. I used all my arena tokens. I got through all of the uh, paralog um, chapters as well. So I've probably done like 15 battles in the last week, but I just had that much I needed to do. And I'm at the point where I have unlocked most of the tech tree and I'm like finalizing my squads now. Like I'm really like calcifying like what they are at this point. I'm putting all my best artifacts on them and I'm I'm filling them up as much as I can. Um, so I'm kind of at the point where I'm ready to like push through the rest of the campaign. Um, and, uh, but this game is really fun, man. Like I, I really enjoy the squad building element to the game. Um, the way you kind of construct your squads, especially later in the game where you have kind of a, enough leadership capability where you can fully, uh, kit out a squad of nine members. Um, it's pretty cool. You can kind of make some really versatile teams or some really interesting compositions of teams where you have um like I'm I'm trying to build I'm actually building a couple squads that are like anti ambush squads where I have like front lighters in the front and the back and then they're all my like squishies are in the middle um because uh, ambush squads are pretty prevalent in the campaign there's a lot of squads so basically wh- what that means is uh, when they attack you their uh units they'll have these like rogue units that actually go behind your squad and they'll hit the enemy they'll hit the units in your back line um so if you have uh, you have tanks in front and the whole back line, you'll actually protect that middle uh, middle line where they're they're impenetrable. They can't be touched, basically. Um, so, or at least from that, they can't be touched. But um, so uh, that's kind of an interesting. I hadn't I hadn't tried to do this yet, but I'm I'm I started to notice how many assassin squads were being thrown at me <laughs> by the game, and I'm like, I need to do something about this. I need to be able to like have two or three squads that can handle these things. Um, because when there's like 10 of them, I can't kill them all, you know, and they're going to get somebody. Um, so, um, so yeah, it's like there, there's some kind of, um, uh, unique challenges the game gives you, uh, with the way it kind of structures the, the battles and then, um, the way it allows you to structure your teams. Um, it's kind of, I'm, I'm having a lot of fun with it, um, in that regard. So I'm definitely planning on beating this game. Um, I don't know how much longer it's going to take me. I, again, I don't think I'm going to finish it by next week um but uh, i'm gonna keep playing it for sure um amongst amongst other things so uh having a lot of fun with that one and then uh uh, last game uh this came out on playstation on friday is uh fucking vampire survivors uh i have i've known about this game i've i've looked into it i've seen gameplay of it um it became you know kind of a craze a couple years ago when it came out on pc um but uh it finally came to playstation on friday um, so I just, I just said, fuck it, dude. I'm, you know what? I'll just, I'll pick it up and try it and play it there. Uh, it's fucking $5. <laughs> it's so it's super cheap. Um, so, uh, it is, um, man, it's uh, probably some of the best $5 I've ever spent on a video game, man. Like it is, it is wild to think, uh, how cheap they're like, how cheap the game is for how fucking fun and addictive it is. Um, so for anybody who hasn't played before vampire survivors is, the first of what has become kind of a mini genre, uh, sort of, there are tons of these games out there. There are a lot of copycats that popped up, um, after this game kind of took off. Um, but basically you're, it's kind of a retro style, like I'd say almost like an NES, uh, looking game. Uh, but you basically, you control a character and waves of enemies will spawn and they're, they literally are just trying to run at you specifically, um, and kill you. And they just spawn at certain interval intervals in the levels. Um, and you you pick up uh, experience, though, when you kill enemies. Um, and you'll level the character up. And when that happens, you'll, get, you'll be given a choice of, like, three or four power-ups. Um, and usually that'll be new weapons or maybe accessories you can put on. Uh, but the weapons are automatic. They fire automatically. Like, the, they have, like, set attack patterns, basically. So there's some that will, uh, for instance, like, the whip just, like, kind of has this, like... Um, kind of like oval shaped space it'll shoot in in the direction you're facing um or the uh there's this one called the the bible like the holy bible um it'll uh kind of rotate around your character in a circle um and you can um then there's another one there's a couple other ones that like shoot in uh the diagonals out of your character and stuff they'll shoot these projectiles uh then there's like axes it just like kind of throws them in the air in an arc and they'll just hit enemies um so there's tons of there's tons of different weapons. There's probably like twenty or thirty of them uh, all told, um, and they all do different things. Um, but you'll pick up you you have a limit of six weapons and six accessories that you can have on your character at any time, and um, so you'll the game gets 
insane as you start playing through it more where eventually you'll get to the late game where your your character is literally like uh you know fucking like enemies are spawning constantly and your your whole screen is just covered in enemies and you're you're just murdering them super fast like it's like your your character's got like you know all six different weapons shooting out of them at the, at crazy speeds and they're humongous they have these humongous area of effect and shit but it's all automated you don't control uh the weapons at all in a real way you're not like pressing a button to make them shoot or anything like that the only thing you do in this game is move your character that's it um so it's so simplistic in its gameplay but um at that like base level but there's depth to it in the way you you know what weapons you choose to use uh and then the power ups like the power up accessories you choose to uh, augment those with and um the game is really fun dude like it's fucking addicting as hell i fucking last weekend i was i was like i was so surprised at how into it i was like i was fucking playing it all day on saturday um and um ended up getting like pretty far in it but um, it's cool. Like there's, um, there's these mechanics where you can, uh, so every weapon has a powered up evolved for version of itself that, um, you usually have to, um, get some other item in your inventory with it in order to upgrade it. Um, usually it's an accessory, but some of the weapons will actually combine together into each other and form like a, a different weapon, uh, after that. <coughs> um, so um, so that's kind of the challenge of the game is is getting everything you need to like picking your weapon loadout and then actually getting the stuff you need to evolve them uh, over the course of the um, the level, which usually the levels are 30 minutes. That's kind of the cap. Um, it's like a soft cap, but um, that's usually uh, at the 30 minute mark. If you survive that long, the Grim Reaper will spawn and will murder you super fast. Um, you are actually able to kill this Reaper. Uh you need a specific loadout of weapons. I've done it once. Um, and actually, I think I've done it twice. Now that I think about it. Um, but uh, once you kill him, a different Reaper called the Gray Death, I think is what it's called, um, will come and you cannot kill this thing. You can't avoid it. You can't kill it. You can't do anything about it. Um, it just kills you. It, it, it ends your run straight up. So uh, the max you can really play is 31 minutes. Uh, there is actually an endless mode that I just unlocked, though, um, that lets you play continuously if you want to um which is um interesting i haven't tried that yet so um but yeah the game's fun there's just a lot of unlocks like that's kind of the that's kind of the addictive part of the game is is continuing to play to unlock stuff like you unlock new characters uh you actually have to unlock a lot of the weapons and accessories like you don't just get them by default like you have to play the game in order to start having them pop up in your power-ups when you level up um but uh there's also a lot of little secret stuff you can unlock in the levels as well um, whether they're like pickups you can get or um, kind of just like unique things that happen in the level that are like secrets. Um, there's a lot of that stuff in the game too, um, which is pretty cool. So it's um, it's a very addictive game. I, I mean, it's $5. How can I not recommend it? <laughs> like it's, it's, it's cheaper than a fucking League of Legends skin. Like I, what are you doing? Just fucking buy it for $5. Like, you get so much content for $5. Like it's, it's super fucking fun. <laughs> Um, funny is already, I have a version of this game on my phone. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, yeah, I think it's on mobile, right? Um yeah. and uh but um but yeah, man, it's it's a super fun game. It came out with like 220 something trophies on PlayStation, which is fucking hilarious. Um it's there's an insane trophy list for this game, but I'm uh I'm actually I've actually gotten through a substantial amount of that though in this this week I've been playing this game. Um I think I have almost half of the trophies at this point, but um, they do have a few DLCs also um, with it that I haven't gotten into. So I'll probably end up picking those up and, and trying those out as well. But um, but yeah, uh, the only other thing I'll say is um, the game is uh, I heard somebody else talking about this on a podcast and, and it, it is a very good point that is worth bringing up is that this game is kind of like the look of it is a straight up rip off of Castlevania. Like it's not even it's not even really a hidden part of it like the the guy who made the game literally talked about like using castlevania sprites and editing them so um so there's like i don't really i'm kind of it's kind of interesting that uh konami didn't decided not to do anything to this person they ended up actually collaborating with them which is funny enough they have it the game has a contra dlc like an official contra dlc um as part of it so Konami ended up signing off on everything that happened in this game, but dude, it's just like, it's so blatant. Like the Castlevania ripoff is crazy. Um, the weapons are straight out of Castlevania. 
they most of them do the same thing they do in Castlevania. Um, so it's uh, that's just it's just notable. I don't personally care that much um, per se. I mean, we talked about this with like Pal World earlier in the year, like how egregious that that was. This is worse than that, in my opinion. Um, like this straight up, like some of the sprites just straight up look like Castlevania sprites. Um, so it's um, but it is what it is. Like nobody cares. It's just it's just notable though. It's definitely something worth noting. But um, so much. Have you actually played this on your phone or yeah, or no? I actually. Yeah, I actually have this on my phone already. <laughs> I've been playing it okay. for a couple, a couple of months already. Okay. I just never really talked about it because it's a to me it's a, uh, it's a fun game, but it's like one of those games I just pick up when I'm like bored at work on my lunch or something like that. Man, I totally disagree with you. I don't think it, I don't look at it that way at all. <laughs> I mean, I'm playing it on PlayStation though, so that's kind of how my brain's looking at it. I would not want to play this on mobile. Uh, I don't think. Uh, I feel like the control would be terrible on there, but. Um, but I don't know. I haven't played it, so who knows, but it's fun. Like I said, it spawned kind of a genre out of this. There's tons of these games now. Yeah. Um, there's another one called uh, halls of torment that I'm actually following. Cause it, that one, um, it plays the same way. As far as I understand, like you just move your character around, but it kind of looks like Diablo and it has like equipment and stuff that you like mm-hmm. equip uh, and things like that. And that one actually looks kind of interesting. So, um, so I'm kind of following that one, but um, but yeah, no, Vampire Survivors is very fun. I, I'm enjoying it a lot. I think it's a very fun game. So highly recommended at a five dollar price point. Um, all right, Montreal, what about you? What have you been playing this week? Uh, so I'm gonna delete Final Fantasy 13. Uh, I've just been playing Black Myth Wukong, and all right, like I hate being this guy, man. Uh oh. I hate being this guy. No, like I hate being this guy because um I feel like the discourse around this game is very dishonest. Um yeah. even yeah, well, on like even like on the subreddit and like uh-huh. anything like that. Because I don't really be on Twitter like that anymore. So like even on the subreddit, but I have been complaining on su- on Twitter about this game. That's like been my mm-hmm. only outlet. So I have been on Twitter just complaining exclusively about this game or whatever. Um, like jokingly, not like seriously. Yeah. Um, I'll say fuck certain bosses' names and like fuck them or whatever the case may be. And people are, yeah, fuck them or whatever. Um, but uh, yeah, so this game is very good. Um, I, I do like this game. Like I still, it's still holding. It's for me a uh, seven point five to eight out of ten. Yeah, I'm damn near done with the game in the last chapter of the game and everything. I have like maybe like a couple of bosses to go and then I'm done with the game. And I'm probably okay. going to play New Game Plus. I'm probably going to try Platinum this game, actually. Oh, um, wow. Okay. But uh, that being said, I think the game does have a lot of flaws with it, particularly with the PlayStation version and the frame rate. We need to talk about that. Um, a lot of people are dick riding this game, and they don't want to say any flaws because of some weird like culture war going on with this game. I don't know. I haven't been tapped into it, but... A lot of people are afraid to criticize the game because you know either they're all in or they're or you're against the game when or whatever you're a fucking there's no nuance anymore. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> you're you're a woke leftist if you like this game or if you hate this game or whatever. Um, no, so uh, the frame rate, at least on the PS5, is fucking abysmal. Um, there are certain boss fights, even on performance mode. I would have full frame skipping like my game would Ooh. legitimately cr- like wow. like freeze up. The game is still going, though, and I get I die. I've died a couple of times just because of that. Oh, so it's uh, like it's like it's like network lag kind of lag. Like, it's yeah, not, it's like it's like network lag, weird. but it's offline. Um, that's weird. I, I've yeah. never seen that actually in an offline game. Um, So the other thing is I, I didn't mention, too, when you first d- get the game. Uh, you download like maybe 20 or 40 gigs and then the game has an additional 100 gigs inside its own game client Whoa. that you have to download yeah it's crazy um uh, for all the textures and stuff because the game looks good but it's like i can yeah. tell that's where the 100 gigs went towards is because like the all the textures and you know all that shit that they put in there or whatever um, like I said, the game is an open world. It has an open area that you can explore, but it's more so like a classic adventure game where, you know, 
you may have an open area that you can explore before you go into the next area or the chapters are your levels per se and i'll just say i'll keep it at that i think each chapter is a level so there are like six levels but they're long as fuck and they have multiple bosses in them and everything of that nature um but they call them chapters so just for simplicity's sake i call them levels uh mm-hmm. to, to keep everybody you know uh yeah. what, what the game is like and you can go back in between those levels anytime you want to um uh, with with your uh, teleporting between your uh, your shrines or bonfires or whatever the case may be, you can teleport yeah. between them. Yeah. Um. So there are a couple of things I do like the game. It, it approaches the gameplay from a or the way certain things happen. It approaches it in a classic way of like the game doesn't tell you, you just have to discover it. Right. Um. I got the chapter five though without knowing that there's a blacksmith in the game that can upgrade <laughs> your armor. Yeah. And that's not fun to me in my yeah. opinion now the other people that may be like oh i gotta discover this and that's cool like and you do get armor that upgrades that like is better than the next you know so there's no reason to get a quote-unquote blacksmith but but if i want to keep an armor that has certain perks on it and i want to ride with this armor because that's my play style um yeah, you you need a blacksmith to upgrade the armor so that your defense can be more sustainable within the level the later levels of the game or whatever. Mm. So, um but the blacksmith was 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 blocked behind like a side quest, right? Yes, it's literally hidden. Like I had to go out my way to find the quest path for this. Um and that's why that's why I was telling you and DJ like explore even if it doesn't even seem like there's something there, there's something there. Like legitimately, yeah. Yeah. like explore the game, and because I, I don't want to spoil it for anybody, so I'm not going to tell you where it's at, how to get to it, or anything like that, um, unless you ask me, and then I'll tell you. Um, but yeah, um, yeah, the blacksmith is locked behind certain things, and there's even like a garden thing too, because you have to collect, you get certain collectibles for crafting and everything like that, and that's locked behind the same thing. Like they're all in like one area or whatever, and. Like, that's super convenient, but it's also super dumb to lock this. Because before, the NPCs are scattered. And to the game's credit, when you're, like, trying to choose an area to go to, it will show you where that NPC is so you can teleport to that shrine where that NPC is, like, in the general area of that shrine. The only thing is I'd never found a blacksmith. Like, I didn't even know there was a blacksmith in the game. And, like, he upgrades your weapons. You can I mean, he upgrades your armor. You can upgrade your own weapons, but he upgrades your armor. Um... Cause like that that's was weird. You can upgrade your weapons at the shrine, but you can't upgrade your armor at the shrine. You need the blacksmith. <laughs> that is so weird. yeah, so the it's what? it's yeah. So I just I just thought, oh, okay, maybe what armor upgrading is not a thing in this that game. That feels almost pointless then. Like, why even have that there? If you can do one but not the other? That's exactly what a lot of things. So there are a couple of things in this game that feel really fucking stupid. And um Mm-hmm. Another thing I don't like is I understand from a story perspective, like narratively speaking, I understand why they do it. Gameplay wise and for the player, totally unfair. So there are certain weapons or certain items that you may need to defeat yeah. certain phases of a boss. Yeah. And the game, like for instance, there's a boss in the third chapter. Third chapter, second or third chapter, um, I can't remember. Uh, his second phase is doable. You can beat him without it. But I fought this boss literally for like three hours, Justin. No, two yeah. hours. I fought him for about an hour and a half. I say an hour and a half. Yeah. And then I was like, you know what? Fuck it. I'm gonna look up how people beat him in his second phase. And then I saw a guy use an item. He just totally negated his second phase, and I'm like, what the fuck? And then I was like, how do I get this item? And I I literally did the side quest for this boss or for this for this boss. Um, but I didn't do I didn't go back to the area where I met the NPC the first time because the NPC's back at the area that, that you meet him in, and then you fight him, and then he takes you to this area, and then you get the item, you do some other stuff, and you get the item then or whatever. And I'm just like, what the fuck, man? Like mm. that would have helped me out a lot or whatever. Um mm-hmm. So that that's what that's where I it, my advice to players and to and to you when you finally do play this game explore everything. I literally got an item just from exploring in the first chapter of the game 
that helped me out in the fourth chapter or the fifth chapter of the game, like significantly helped me out. Um, yeah, because I read the description of the item when I got it. I'm like, dog, what the fuck? Like, there are no monsters or no area like this. And then when I got to that area, I was like, oh, okay, this is why I need this item, you know, <laughs> or whatever the case may be. Yeah. But that was like 30, 40 hours later, or maybe I'm not, I'm only 37 hours in. So that was like 30 hours later that I needed yep. that item. Um, so like, like I said, narrative wise, it makes sense because it's telling the story, it's telling the narrative narrative story and everything of that nature. I've I'm reading, I'm like on the last couple of chapters of the actual book Journey to the West. Um, so <laughs> like I'm understanding what's going on and everything of that nature. Um and it, like everything's making sense to me now as I'm playing the game and reading the book or whatever, even though the game takes place after the book. Um mm-hmm. uh it's still really cool. Uh, I will say, like, on a side note, like, I do highly recommend if you're just a fan of anime, any kind of medium of, like, anything, like, just read Journey to the West. Uh, there's one character that Ganon is actually based off of that's, like, in Wukong's party. He's a, mm. he's a man with a pig's head. And, like, that's <laughs> Ganon. Oh, it was literally yeah. Ganon or whatever. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, there are a lot of things in there. Uh, there, when I was, like, when I'm reading this book, I'm just like, oh, my God, like, so much of like everything that we love as far as like anime video games and everything like that is mm-hmm. based off this book and it's actually pretty it's pretty cool to see where the original where the origin of this of all these of shonen in general came from you know uh, it's just pretty cool to see that anyway um so the second thing i don't like uh yeah that, that that's the main thing i don't like about the game I don't like the the stuttery, and then the the dev- developers came out and said like we're not releasing the patch for like months, man. Like, and I'm just like, dude, like that's Wait, not what? viable. Really? Yeah, they're not releasing the patch for like months or whatever. And I'm like, that's that's just not viable for this frame rate issue that happens because it. I had to switch the game back to balance mode, and when I switched the game back to balance mode, my inputs were like snappier. I was dodging stuff, I was counterflowing stuff left and right. And everything like that. But when I had it in performance mode, which is a 60 frames per second, there's a significant delay. And I didn't know I was crutching myself for 30 hours of the game until I did that. Now, some other yeah. people may say, like, oh, you're just complaining. I never had that issue. Like, I've seen that on Reddit. But, like, I've been having this issue. Um, and it's really it really pisses me off. Like, that's why I broke my controller on the fifth boss. Because it was happening so much. Uh, he, do this, like, he does this, like, arena move, uh, AOE move. That literally like froze my screen. I and I, I could not dodge it for the fucking love of me. And I was just like, and even Wait, when it you didn't said that freeze, was in performance mode, that was happening. That was in performance mode, sixty frames, Justin. What? Performance mode. Yeah, wow. I had to switch it to balance mode. I don't know what's going on with it. Even like Digital Foundry says, b- balance mode is probably the better mode to play in. Um, it's at forty five frames. Um, Why even? Like, how could you release it like this though? I don't. That's that's what I'm saying. Like, like no one's don't talk- even put I mean, the mode in there if it's like this bad. I mean, exactly. they have to know. They have to know. They, they know. They have to know. It's it's terrible. Even if you're playing it on PC, there are certain things in the PC mode that you can't play it in because the frame rate is so bad on PC. Um, which I'm glad I didn't get it on PC. Um, How has this but, game sold so many copies? I don't. So I don't know. Um, <laughs> it's crazy. These yeah. issues are these issues are like like what is going on with this game? This is a weird game. There's something there's something happening here. Like Because the game is really good. It's a really good game. Yeah, I know, but, but it's like these aren't the talking points that anybody's talking about. It's it's exactly. all the woke it's all the woke shit and like, you know, like Exactly. Know. Exactly. Like the, the the woke versus anti woke debate, you know, it's like Yeah, exactly. It's completely unimportant. I I don't know. Exactly. Yeah. Um, because yeah, if you're playing the game, you're you're an evil person. Like you clearly don't, oh my God. you know, care about women and all that shit like that or whatever. And I and then when, I, when I'm playing the game, right? So you don't meet any women characters until like the later half of the game, right? And the female characters that you do meet are not over sexualized. They're actually well made, well designed. I love their designs in the game. Like I don't understand. <laughs> Like I just don't get where this is coming from when I'm playing this game. As far as like, well, wasn't that, it about I, some comments? Like one of the 
the the yeah, the developer said something. like something yeah. like you know he said something like oh I want the snake to like if I cover her her body her face looks really good or whatever or whatever case maybe because it was one of the characters that has like a female face but like a snake body or whatever and it's yeah. like okay bro like I don't fucking care like <laughs> it's his fucking game I don't fucking care yeah. man like you know yeah. whatever like I, I just don't care like at the end of the day um. But it wasn't even like I don't know. He, I, I, I don't fucking know. It's sounded like more like a joke, but I don't, you know, whatever. Um, so yeah, that that's my main gripe with the game because that's why. Yeah, like I said, that's why I broke my controller with on it. So another thing is um, the bosses themselves. While I do love boss fights, I do. There are certain fights where I feel like there are two different design teams, bro. There are, is like one team they get it. They understand what a boss fight is, how how the players should react to it, and everything yeah. of that nature. And there are other boss fights where I'm like, bro, you just made this shit hard to be hard. Like, there was no thought, rhyme, or reason why you made this the way you made this boss. Uh-huh. And that's the other thing where, I'm, where, 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 like, outside of the culture shit, I'm not seeing people talk about that enough, and it's very irritating to me, right? Um, so the reason why, like, this is a prime example too, and I had this kind of same thing with, with uh, Stellar Blade, but Stellar Blade I feel like was a little bit more fair. Stellar Blade f- to for me, Stellar Blade was the opposite. Stellar Blade was they have well designed bosses, but they throw off the rhythm with their fucking slow motion shit, right? So <laughs> like, uh, this game is the total opposite. Like they have the rhythm right and everything, but their bosses are fucking bullshit. Some of their bosses are bullshit. Uh, I'm going to actually go back one day and listen to my Sekiro review. I don't think I complain about the bosses that much in Sekiro. Maybe no. there are like one or two bosses that are like bullshit or whatever. They're great. Um, I'm trying to think of one that I hate. I mean, the no, I think a lot of people point to the Guardian Ape. I actually don't think that boss is that bad, though. Yeah, he's um, not that bad. He, he's not that bad. I'm trying I, to I, think of one. Like the the... The monk is kind of annoying, I guess. The fat, the giant fucking fat monk or whatever. Yeah, I beat his um, ass like really. I know he's not hard me. though. He's just he's kind of annoying. But yeah, yeah. I remember I one shot his second form. Like I I didn't even <laughs> I literally didn't die to him. Yeah. Um, so so he wasn't he wasn't that bad. He's just in a, a little bit of an annoying fight. Yeah. Um, so so this is where like this is why I like Sekiro. Oh, so the beast. The hidden, the hidden, the the optional boss at the very end of the game. Oh, that, okay. That boss yeah. is a fucking pain. That boss ass. is some bullshit. Yeah. yeah, that boss was some bullshit. <laughs> um, so this is why I like Sekiro so much, right? Their bosses are designed in a way to where. This is also why I think the game is called Sekiro Dies Twice. It took me so long to figure it out. It's not just because of the fucking game mechanic dies twice. It's because the bosses are designed. For you to beat them first try. And even if you don't beat them first try, you have that second chance right there on the spot to beat them the second time. This game does not design their bosses to be beaten on the first try. Mm. In my opinion, Stellar Blade kind of does this. I haven't played um I actually I actually am gonna back go back and play Liza P. Um I'm I'm having the same thought, dude. I yeah. want to play this game because I played Stellar Blade and I loved it. I want to yeah. play this game and I actually kind of want to play Liza P because I think this is like a trifecta of Souls likes or yeah. Sekiro likes, whatever you want to call them. Sekiro Souls likes, whatever. Um, that are very interesting because I feel like people universally love Liza P. Yeah. Um, and I think people not quite universally liked Stellar Blade, but it was pretty well received. Um, and then this it's game, the same thing with Wukong. I mean, it's the whole yeah. culture thing. They didn't the the culture war thing that happened with Stellar Blade, you know. Mm-hmm. So yeah, but my bad, I didn't right. catch you off. No, and, yeah, and I just I'm I'm kind of curious about Liza P. Like that, like how because that one I think is the one I think people elevate above these two. And yeah, my impression of it though is that it's probably on a similar level to these two. Yeah. Um, so. It, so that that's my thing too, right? Um, even the the Dark Souls game, uh. <laughs> Elden Ring. Okay, I don't. I haven't played the DLC for Elden Ring, but Elden Ring to a certain extent kind of did this as well. Um, 
I would say Dark Souls. I even say no. Well, Dark Souls two kind of started this trend, and it kind of it kind of spilled over into Dark Souls three. So Demon Souls, Dark Souls, and Sekiro. In my opinion, uh, they you go into the boss fight like I can beat this. Maybe I can beat this boss. The bosses are beatable if the player is patient enough to read the boss. They don't do any kind of weird attacks. They don't do any kind of like special shit. You know, like like they may do a combo string, right? And then you you figure out the combo string. The AI figures out that you figure out the combo string. So they add another combo, uh, another additional <laughs> attack in there. And you're like, what the fuck? He never did that before. Uh, like, you know, like, yeah. so. Well, okay. So y- that's interesting. You're kind of getting into something weird though. Like, cause this is something that AI I think can change in games. Mm-hmm. Is that the behavior of enemies can actually react to the player? Yeah. Um. And I like that idea conceptually, but I have a feeling it's gonna suck ass until it's like, like several years in. You know, like yeah. it's gonna feel really bad because you you so, need to like tune it a certain way where it's fair. You know, it's not like the game is just reading your inputs and and fucking cheating. You know. Yeah. So, so that that's where I'm getting at, right? I feel like a really good design boss. Every boss should be beatable on the first try. Yeah. That's that's my opinion. Now I know people may disagree with that assessment, but I feel like I feel like every boss, every enemy you encounter should be beatable on the first try because the 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 point of this game, especially for Wukong, is patience. This game also has something that I really love that I think more games should do is quiet time. You literally you get a point for it. You get a skill point for it, and you find these little spots in there where you your character literally meditates, and it shows the the environment with like mm. um with the with the with the yoga bong like bong because my mm. my wife she does yoga and she meditates, and I hear the bong when she um when she's meditating or whatever, and it does the yoga bong, and it's like a, it's like two or three minutes, and you're like looking at the the scenes, and it's like quiet. And your character's meditating, and it's actually, uh, I guess, a moment for you to reflect as a player. Like you just went through this intense moment. Calm down. Mm-hmm. And I appreciate that. I literally appreciate that. Every time I I come across it, and you can actually revisit them. Every time I come across it, I actually appreciate that moment because it takes. Like sometimes I go through an intense boss fight or an intense yeah. area, and then yeah. it's right there at the end to reward the player. So like, that reminds me of um, you remember from Ghost of Tsushima the uh, the hot. Oh, the hot springs. yeah, the hot that springs. was that that was that for me, because you could sit there as long as you want, I think, from what I yeah. remember, like you don't have to get up um, like you can you can wait. Uh, and yeah, I would do that sometimes and just kind of like chill. You know? yeah. so I, I like that. I like that. I think more games need to do deliberate things like that. You know, um, yeah, it, it's it, it can't just be like, go, go, go all the time, you know, because yeah. because it is stre- like these games are stressful, you know, like Stellar Blade is stressful, like. Dark Souls is stressful. Elden Ring, I'm sure, is very stressful. It's like, give your player a breather. You know, there have to be breathers in there where they can, like, kind of catch their breath, recompose themselves like they just went through something harrowing, you know? Yeah, and Um, and kind of reward them for it. Like, just give a skill point or something like that. I think that's cool. Um, And the game does that, and I really appreciate that. So I think the theme of the game is patience. The problem I have with the theme of the game is it's contradicting itself with certain bosses and certain enemy types and stuff like that. Uh, no. There are certain things you just can't predict as a player um, for for fighting these bosses. And I feel like they're designing these bosses because the idea of what a Souls-like game is or um, an action combat game with bosses, oh, excuse me, <clears throat> it, it is, is you're going to die, but you're going to learn from your mistakes each time. I don't like that philosophy. I like the philosophy is if I'm patient enough, I can beat this boss on my first try. And even if I do die, then I know the second time I can beat this boss. You know, like that should be the philosophy of when it comes to designing a boss fight, in my opinion. Mm. And that's what Sekiro taught me. That's why I think they had to die twice mechanic because they either knew one. um, If you just patient enough, you can beat this boss on the first try, but you don't have to go all the way back to the bonfire. You can immediately restart right then and there and try again. And on top of that, when you beat, like, some of the bosses have, like, three nodes, two or three nodes, right? 
every time you take that node away from you, you gain a node of regaining your uh, your your second chance back or your third chance back or whatever the case may be. And mm-hmm. I think that's what Sekiro was trying to teach people. And I think people completely glossed over that. I haven't seen that in any review or anything like that. What it means to actually do a boss fight in Sekiro. And it's like, yeah, yeah I'm glazing this game, dick sucking the game. It's a fucking great game. Because now that I'm playing these clones, I see where they completely missed the mark at. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, for Wukong, for instance, there are there's a boss fight that literally takes your HP a scripted cutscene in the fight in a fight that takes your HP. Yeah. And it's like for no reason. Whatever current HP you have, it takes half of that. I just think that's completely unfair oh, to the player. Is... And it's unavoidable. Like it's unavo- unavoidable. Yeah, that is un- that is unfair. Like, it happens that, that twice is... in the fight. That's annoying. Yeah, that sounds like bullshit. Um, I don't I think I'm not a hundred percent in agreement with you though. I don't think every boss needs to be designed to be beaten on the first try. Uh, mm-hmm. I think, um, like uh, Stellar Blade, you know, for example, uh, I-, I think most of the bosses in that game are pretty easy. Yes. Um, I really only had trouble with the last couple in the the main story, um, and I was a little disappointed in that actually. When I was like, that's like the one thing I took away from the game was like, man, I wish some of these bosses like were a little harder, you know. So I had to like, because like the, some the boss fights in in Stellar Blade are awesome. Like, there's some really yeah, awesome fights. And I like, I actually like the experience of dying and like re-experiencing the fight again, you know, but it's like they were easy enough where I was able to beat them in one try a lot of the time. Yeah. Um, so you're like, you kind of get past it and you're like, well, damn, I have to play through the whole game again to see that again. You know, it's like, um, so um, I'm thinking particularly the one at the top of the the final level, um, you know, the, the, you know, the one I'm talking about that like teleports around and shit. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That fight's fucking sick, dude. But um it's not that hard. Um uh, so it's like um you know when you finish it that's at the end of a really long excellent level too, you know, and I kind of like you know you want to save her a little bit more, you know. Um which is weird to say. It's like you're not you don't want to die necessarily, but it's like it's part of the game though a lot of the time like with Sekiro uh you di- you end up dying a lot even though you necessarily that might not you know the intent might be that you can. Um so you end up getting to know these bosses really deeply, you know, and I kind of like that experience a little bit, um, you know, because you kind of learn their patterns and it starts to feel good when you execute, you know, blocking all their attacks and then you you hit their openings and stuff. Um, and I, I also like bosses sometimes where execution matters, you know, a lot yeah. where you don't have a lot of room for error, you know, like if you uh, can't execute certain uh, you know, avoiding certain moves or blocking certain moves where you 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 lose. Like you're gonna lose the fight if you do that too much, you know. Uh, so I like that as well. I I kind of I don't know, but I'm with you at the same time. The Dark Souls style of like you know you you're gonna die like 20 times, uh, no matter what you do, you know, before you figure out the boss, unless you go read a guide, watch a guide video before you do it. Um. I don't necessarily love that either. There's got to be a middle ground somewhere in there. And, and not every well, boss has to be the same way either, right? Yeah, not, so. not every boss. Well, when I mean like beatable in the first try, I, I think I still want the boss fights to be difficult. But I feel like they should be, if you're like, it may take an hour, it may take an hour and a half to beat the boss. But on your first try, but you're like super patient with it. And you're like, okay, I'm going to yeah. figure this out. I'm going to dodge everything right. real quick. And you you figure it out during mid fight, but I mean that's the st- in my opinion that's still the same amount of time as dying a lot to the same boss. You see what I'm saying? You may take an yeah. hour to beat the boss, or you may take an hour to beat the boss dying a lot to the boss, or whatever the case may be. This, right. The outcome should still be the same. Mm-hmm. The outcome shouldn't be oh if I had this item this would have cut thirty minutes off my boss time. You see what yeah, I'm saying? That's not that's not good. Yeah. Um or. Uh, there are unskippable cutscenes that damage me within the, the within the boss fight. That's- like if you're gonna make an item be required for a boss fight, or significantly make make it significantly easier, it needs to be something that's common. Yeah, um, it can't be something specifically that the player could miss. Like that's really bad design, in my opinion. Yeah, so uh, it's like that. That that those are my biggest gripes with like now to stellar blaze credit i feel like every boss on that in that game was doable the first time you beat him definitely that's that's my uh, my opinion I, I feel like from the even to the end it it was 
every boss. I think the would. last boss is not like that, but that's appropriate for a final boss. I I think yeah. a final boss should be really hard in a game. Yeah, like exactly. Hollywood. Yeah. So. Uh, my only issue with Stellar Burn, like I said, was the, the slow-mo shit. I, I fucking hated it by, by the end of the game. Um, but uh, I wasn't using the dodge mechanic that much, so I was more focused on parrying. So I guess it didn't bother me quite as much. Well, you, you, well even when you parry, you, you slow-mo. Like, it slow-mo is like... That's a, true. A, it's a slight, though. It's not, as, yeah. it's not as long as the dodge, though. Yeah, that's true. That's um, true. The, the I guess I'm not... Long. I don't... Um, I didn't have as much of an issue with it, though. I'm trying to... I'm thinking of, like... Because remember near when you like perfect dodge, like your character like fucking disappeared and shit, you know? And it, um, and time did stop a little bit for that game. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, you know, there's been other action games that have done that kind of thing. It is a little more egregious in Stellar Blade. Um, I don't mind the dodge mechanic. I mind the parry mechanic. I don't like my yep. parrying being slow mode because that there are is, a string of, there is, are a string of attacks and it, that can I break agree. up my rhythm. You know? Well, it does. It hurts your timing. It, yeah. it kind of makes the timing really difficult because you are then having to anticipate that slow mo. Exactly. Um, like you're almost being punished for for executing the mechanic correctly. <laughs> you know, it's yeah. like that's. Whereas not, with dodging, you have a there are yeah. invincibility frames. You can dodge back yes. or whatever after the right. slow mo, whatever the case right. may be. So, right. I, I don't mind it because, like, like I said, Bayonetta does it. Uh, well, Bayonetta is designed around that though. Like, yeah, that's exactly. Whole, like, which time is a whole fucking mechanic in that game? Yeah. So, um, so. But yeah, with uh, with Wukong, um, I, I like I like every aspect of the game. Um, like I said, there could be some things that could be designed better in the game. Um, if they ever do make a part two or some kind of like uh, even not even a part two, a spiritual successor, they want to explore another story or something like that. Mm. Um, I think they should. I don't think they're going to get really good feedback, so that it has to be up to them to look at what the problem is with their games and do it. Um, or right. fix it. But yeah, I, I mean, I've been going on this game for a while. But like, th- those are my, those are the two, two or three things that are holding this game back for me, me personally, for it being like a nine or a ten because it, it's so egregious with some of the bosses that they just made the boss. Because some of the bosses don't even have tails; they just do their move. And you're like, I'm like, how mm-hmm. the fuck am I, as a player am I supposed to predict that move? Like, I just well, have that's to learn the, the that's boss. the kind of yeah, that's the kind of thing you're talking about. I think where you you basically have to die. Yeah. Uh, in order and like learn the mechanic and anticipate it, you know, and that that is, yeah, there there should be telegraphing to most attacks, I would think, especially ones that are going to do a lot of damage to you. Yeah. Um, you know, smaller attacks, it's fine. That that's not a big deal if it's not going to take a lot of health from you. But you know, if it's something that's like going to one shot you, um, you know, it sh- there should be an indicating some kind of indication of what you should do, you know, for the player, some kind of tell. So. Yeah, and I agree. The problem is with the even with the light attacks that do do the like instant hits and stuff like that. Like the damage is inconsistent. Sometimes they do a shit ton of damage. A combo can do a shit ton, or not even a combo. A light attack can do a shit ton of damage to you, and then sometimes it can't. And it's the same thing with the enemies or whatever. Sometimes the 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 small minion monsters or whatever they can do shit tons of damage with their like their instant attacks and shit like that. So it was just like. It's a lot of trial and error. My problem is I don't mind trial and error. I just mind. I want it to be fair. I don't want it to be trial and error because that's that's what's expected of the genre. If that makes any right. sense, yeah. um, right. I don't know. Like that's just me. Every boss and like, there's a reason. Like in Double May Cry, they don't put you in the hardest mode right then and there because every boss. It's meant to be beatable, and then when you play the next difficulty, then they kind of up the ante on you, and the damage is more. They may do some new attacks here and there. You may have to watch some things, but you, as, or as the player, have more tools at your disposal when you go to the higher difficulties of well, the your game. your experience. They expect you to be able to execute. At that exactly. Point. So, um, I don't know. That's just my opinion. Um, I think a lot of people's opinions on like the dark souls and the bosses and stuff like that dark souls is their first type of game with this type of design even though i feel like it's a very old school design i don't know i feel like it's a very old school design that dark souls and all these other games take that we're just going back to our roots as far as video games and that's why people love these games like stellar blade and wukong and everything like that um but yeah uh that um um i still recommend the game to people um just be aware there are some flaws. This, this is not a perfect game at in, in any bit of the slightest. And um, yeah, even with with all its flaws, it's still a very fun game. Yeah, cool. 
All right. Well, I'll find a planet. I will certainly get my thoughts on it as well. Um, all right, Monster. Well, let's get into the news. Uh, it's going to be a very live service focused uh, up uh, news slate today. But um, let's start with Concord. So, I mean, we've been talking about this game for weeks now, but um, yeah, uh, there was so Tuesday. Or, yeah, I think it was Tuesday uh, is when this happened. Um, there was a blog post from the team at Firewalk, and I'm just going to read it. So, uh, quote, Concord fans, we've been listening closely to your feedback since the launch of Concord on PlayStation 5 and PC and want to thank everyone who has jo- joined the journey abroad aboard the North Star. Your support in the passionate community uh, that has grown around the game has meant the world to us. However, while many qualities of the experience resonated with players, we also recognize that the other aspects of the game and our initial launch didn't land the way we intended. Therefore, at this time, we've decided to take the game offline beginning September 6, 2024 and explore options, including those that will better reach our players. While we determine the best path ahead, Concord sales will cease immediately and we will begin to offer a full refund for all gamers who have purchased the game for PS5 or PC. If you purchase the game for PlayStation 5 from the PlayStation Store or PlayStation Direct, a refund will be issued back to your original payment method. Customers who purchase from the original from other digital storefronts will also be re- refunded. More information about Steam and Epic can be found below. Uh, I want a key on this one. Other retail refunds. For customers who have purchased a physical copy at a retailer or location outside of PlayStation directly, please refer to the refund process of the retailer you purchased it from to obtain your refund. Once refunded, players will no longer have access to the game. We'll keep you updated and thank you again. Thank you again to all the free run, free gunners who have joined us in the Concord Galaxy. End quote. So this game is being taken offline. By the time you hear this podcast, um, it may already be offline. Uh, it's happening uh, tomorrow. And uh, yeah, they're refunding everybody. Um, speculation out there is that this game sold about 25,000 copies. Uh, which to do the math real quick, 25,000 copies at $40 is a million dollars in gross revenue, which is hilarious, like hilariously low for a company like PlayStation. Um, <coughs> that's nothing. That's pennies to them. That's pocket change basically. Um, and uh, yeah, this game fucking bombed like as it's the worst bomb in PlayStation history, basically in terms of first party games. Um, there are some second party games that may, uh that, that may compete there but uh f- from a first party standpoint there there's literally no game i can think of that did this poorly um like you you would probably have to go back to the 90s to even have things close to this um so the most there's two things that are interesting here um one is the retailer refunds uh for physical um i'm going to be curious what happens here i'm 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 going to follow this and see uh you know if there's any information that comes out for people who bought it from like i don't know if you could buy it from target or walmart but i'm assuming some people may have been able to or like amazon or something like that generally speaking with those retailers if you open the game you cannot return it it's exchange only so those players may be screwed out of getting a refund uh which would be bullshit um and then the other thing is um i guess whether this game will even come back Um, because the only thing he says in here that indicates they're even like reevaluating what to do with the game is one sentence in here, um, which is we have decided to take the game offline beginning September 6, 2024 and explore options, including those that will better reach our players. Otherwise the rest of this blog post, he doesn't even like hint at the idea of the game coming back out again. (laughs) So I don't know much. Like, well, how did you take this? Like, what do you what do you take out of this? Um, this DJ and I kind of had a, uh, a a lot of back and forth about this. We we seem to disagree um, about this situation. But um, what did you think about it? Um, I I think the game is five years too late. I don't think there's anything special about the game. I don't think there's any special reason why the game flopped. I think the reason the game flopped is because it's ge- it, it's I want to say generic, but we already have games like this, and we, I mean we discussed it yesterday on, on Discord. Uh, the main takeaway is it br- it literally brought nothing new to the table. Yeah. Um, 
in my opinion, uh, from the gameplay I've seen and everything of that nature. I haven't personally played the game, um, but the obviously the player count and the perk, the sales kind of speak for themselves. Um, if this game came out like maybe five years ago, I think it would have been more received. Might have had a chance. Um, yeah, might have had a chance. Um, but unfortunately, we already have a lot of hero shooters. We already have um, a live service model. We already have these things. It, we went through entire games that have lived and died within these these last eight years of this game being made. So, right. um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, how many live service games on this show have we talked about shutting down? We're going to talk about uh, yeah, a couple. A know. couple of them, yeah. And, uh, yeah, I mean, eight years is a long time, and they should have... I don't know. I, I can't say they should have read the writing on the wall, but they should have read the writing on the wall. Um, also, I don't like the framing of this, in my opinion. Um, normally, okay... I am on the developer side in almost every 95% of the cases. This is that rare 5%, right? Where I'm like, the developers sought out to make this game. This was their design, their game. Like, if you go back to the history of Firewalk and what they were doing, this was their vision, you know? And unfortunately, that vision didn't hit. And for everyone trying to blame, like, yes, Sony may have had a hand in it as well, but I think this is another Anthem situation, in my opinion, where EA, in Anthem's case, was super hands-off. They're like, hey, do what you got to do, bro. Have fun, Bioware. Yeah. Seven years of that game, and we got Anthem. You know, and then, I think, and then EA had to come in and say, why why, why can't I fly? Like, <laughs> Exactly. You know, and it's like yeah. the best part of the game, you know? Yeah. And... Um, I I I kind of think this is the same thing. I think Sony was very hands off with this game, in my opinion. Um, well, I'm glad you brought this up because I think the media is actually perpetuating this narrative that Sony's like was involved with this game from like the jump. Which yes, they were, that, they that's were, what I'm talking were, about. It <laughs> they were not. They they literally bought this studio last year, and they they had a second party relationship with Firewalk going back maybe three years. This game was in development since 2016. That is eight years. I don't think Sony was involved at the beginning. There's no indication of that from them or Firewalk or otherwise. So, yeah, I don't know why me like I've seen articles say that like Sony, you know, greenlit this game or something like they didn't greenlit shit. They didn't greenlight shit like this game was already in development. Sony became interested in it at a certain point and decided to invest in it, I think. But. Um, clearly they invested in the studio and purchased the studio, but like, yeah, th this isn't like Sony wasn't like Firewalk make this game. That's not, that didn't happen here. And, and I, like Firewalk dug their own grave. I totally agree with you here. Um, like, I, like you said, this is kind of like an Anthem situation where like they made their game and then Sony got involved and got interested in it and decided to invest. The game was already kind of probably calcified at that point, what it was, um so but that's the that is the quest that's the big question is what the fuck was sony doing here what did they think what, think what, is, is what about this did they think was was worth investing in i'm so confused by this so they bought the company in 2023 which means they probably were scoping the game out in 2022 well we um, know about the relationship going back to like 2021 they announced like a partnership with firewalk yeah. so so they knew yeah. about the game in 2021 um, and I, I did some more more little research. Uh, Sony, like this company, and then their um, their parent company before they got sold off to Sony, they were already in cahoots with each other. So Sony kind of knew about this already. So, yeah. but they were just like, you know, they weren't their company. It was, I think, it was going to be a first party game for Sony, but they were still like a independent developer. Well, it would have been second party, like second they party. Have, yeah. They wouldn't have owned the company, but it would have been an exclusive. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, second you know. party. Yeah. Um. So it was still. I think it was a second party deal. I, I can't confirm that, but from what the research I was doing, uh, it seemed like Sony already knew about this. And actually, I'm not even sure second party is right. Um, it would actually technically be third party. It would just third be a party. third party. It would just third be a party. third party exclusive. Okay. Like a second party exclusive is a game specifically that Sony like contractually, um, like signs a contract with a company to make a specific game, and then that comes out exclusively on PlayStation. Okay. Like that would be a yes. second party game. So that's I think something like Hell Hell Divers is a second party game. 
Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, so since like, they weren't involved at the beginning, like that would be a third. That would have technically been a third party game if it had stayed that way. Gotcha. So yeah, I, I believe this is more so like a third party exclusive for Sony. Um, it was a, It wasn't even announced, unfortunately. Um, so yeah, so we we knew, we knew about this game way back in 2021, 2020, around that time. I, I think this is a part of Jim Ryan's vision to get jump on the whole live service bandwagon or a uh, wave rather. And I mean, we 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 read about this. Uh, we talked about it in one of our previous episodes, where you know, like they were really trying to delve into the live service mantra or whatever the case may be. And yeah. I think this is like a leftover remnant of that. It was too much invested already at this point, where we all saw live service games failing around us. And Sony's like, they probably just like, hey man, like release it, and we're going to have a like contingency plans or whatever the case may be. So this yeah. is why. I think you're. Uh, this is why I think uh, DJ thinks, and then you you're you're like, no, this is gonna like, they shouldn't do the free to play mantra, and I think DJ is like, they are gonna do the free to play mantra because I be, I believe that's always a contingency for these type of games, in my yeah. opinion. Um, right, that's always the backup plan. Yeah, or, and, and, we and have I, a game coming up. We'll talk about. Yeah, and um, I think this game is no exception to the rule. It's probably gonna take some time in the oven like system wise and network wise to make it happen but it's probably going to happen they're probably going to re-release concord right. free to play version or whatever the case may be yeah so um, just to just to clarify what i was saying about second and third party i just want to make yeah. sure i get this right so i'm not i did because i i didn't say it 100 percent uh the right way so it was third party when it started sony wasn't involved and then eventually they became involved over the last few years that turned it into a second party relationship because I believe Sony was funding, like was actually giving the game funding okay. um, at a certain point. That's the key thing is Sony funding the development of the game, but they don't own the studio. That would be a second party relationship. So that's like held average as an example. A uh, third party would be like square Enix where like square Enix funds the development of the game, but then Sony comes in and like, there's a contract that says like you, Uh, We'll give you a certain amount of development costs, some marketing maybe, and we'll, um, you know, you, but you make the game exclusive to PlayStation. You know, that would be a third, that's the, that's like a third party, like Final Fantasy VII Rebirth or something like that. So, okay. um, So just to clarify that, but um, so yeah, to get into the, the free to play stuff though, uh, to your point. So I I do want to talk about like, what are the, what are the possible routes that this takes uh, here? Uh, I think the first one and the most obvious one, and actually it's interesting, a lot of the random people, like the non, like just just random commenters and stuff, there's a lot of people taking this post as an indication that this game is being shut down permanently. Like they they, mm. they seem to believe that. And I think it's because of the messaging here that it's literally one line that even implies the idea that this game might come back. It doesn't even explicitly say it. It just kind of says we're looking at options like that doesn't indicate the game's coming back. Really, it's not strongly worded um, and it's not explicit enough, in my opinion. So a lot of people are just thinking this game is dead, which is not necessarily true. But that is one option that they don't bring the game back. They just shut the game down. It's done like Concord never comes back. We don't see it again. We don't hear about it again. And Firewalk either moves on to something else. Sony makes them a support studio for something, maybe Bungie or something or, or maybe one of these other live service games. Um, or they just shut Firewalk down entirely, which I don't think is a realistic option given that they just purchased them. So, like, what do you think, though? Like, what, uh, uh, for that part, do you, how realistic do you think the idea is that Concord won't come back? Uh, honestly, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm saying 50 50. Okay. Uh, the only reason I'm uh, 55 45. So, 55 yeah. that it will come back, and then 45 that it won't come back. The only reason why I say it, it, it will come back is because they invested some money in this and they probably want their return, right? I think yeah. that that's what I think. 45 yeah. is uh, uh, Hiroi Totoki. He's just like, we already know how he is. He's just like, well, <laughs> bro, you ain't making the money, so you're cut. Like, yeah. I think that's how he is. And um, yeah. I can definitely see it going in that direction. They would have to do some real convincing, real pitching to him. Like, hey, we can save this game. Here's our game plan. And I can see him saying, okay, let's put it into motion or whatever yep. the case may be. Um, so that's why it can go either way for me, me personally. Yeah. So I'm kind of in the same boat, but I have different reasoning is that um, them refunding everybody. I don't know how this works legally, but if that unwinds the release of the game enough, 
where they make everybody quote unquote whole, you know, by giving all the people who bought the game refunds. Um, can they now write this game down as a loss? You know, the way the mm. way um, Disney's been doing with like a lot of like movie studios and TV studios have been doing um, with stuff is unreleasing it and then writing it down as a loss or never releasing it at all and writing it down as a loss. Like Sony could do that here. That is conceivable. Potentially. The thing is, I don't know. Like it depends on how much they funded the game. How much of it can they truly claim is their loss, you know? Um, And how much of it, uh, like them releasing the game, does that legally cause a problem with being able to, you know, write it down because you technically did release it for sale um so it's i don't know about that so that's that one element of it like if they could write it down let's just say they let's just assume they could that's my 50 50 is that they would seriously debate about that if this game cost uh you know nine figures like we're talking 100 million or maybe a little bit more than that that's a significant amount of money to sony where it's like fuck, like dude if this game this game did so badly like do you think you're gonna make that much money if you try to salvage this i doubt it so that's 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 the reason I feel that way. So the next possible outcome is that they just go for free to play, which, you know, is like I think this like to be clear, like I, I think I think I wasn't being clear when I was talking to DJ in the chat is that I think this is what they're going to do is that they're going to take the game offline for th- three months. They're going to make a, they're going to redesign the monetization and they're going to make it free to play like. I think that is what they are going to do. Um, like that makes the most sense. It requires the least amount of investment. Um, and it's also the thing that is probably the likeliest to save the game. But um, I don't think in this game's case that free to play is going to be enough. Like the interest level was so low here uh, that the barrier to entry of $40 can't be the only explanation. <laughs> like free to play is not going to save this game. Like I, it might be enough for the game to limp along and survive on some kind of, you know, some small amount of players where you have like five to 10,000 players or something like that. But that that's not what Sony wants. And that would be a failure for this game. So um, that's ultimately the point I was making is that if they really truly want to make this game work, you like, you would need to do something more drastic, which to me, that is the third option is that you put this game back in the, back into development basically. And you take a year, to like a year and a half and you like you redesign assets you start redesigning the art of the game the look of the game you maybe develop some more potentially a couple more like a, another mode or two maybe some more maps or something like not, nothing too significant you're not going to get a crazy amount of stuff done in that time frame but enough to change the game in a way that kind of changes the narrative the look would be the most important thing and um sony this is a first party team for sony so sony if sony really wanted to do this they they have support teams they could bring in to help with art assets and redesigning assets and shit like that so they could make it happen i think to make the game look different um or in some way the problem is it's like it might not just be characters though like if you're just talking characters they could do that but if if you're having to redesign the whole aesthetic that's not really possible in that 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 frame of time right so um, what I'm talking about is almost like a patch job and it's like, so that's the third option. I think that one's probably the least realistic and the least likely to happen. But, um, if they were to do it, I just, I, I do feel like it would take that level of work to get people interested in the game again. Um, because yes, from everything I've heard, the gameplay is solid. Um, but I mean, there's plenty of live service games that have great gameplay. Like that's, you know, you got to have some kind of differentiator. Otherwise, there's got to be something interesting in the way the game looks or feels or or some mechanic that is unique to this game. And it's, there's no mechanic that's unique to this game, from what I understand. Like there's yeah. it's it's it doesn't have a hook like that. So um, so that's ultimately where I come down on it is that I don't think this is worth Sony's time to reinvest at all. I'd say just if you can write the game down, write the game down and have firewalk, move on to something else. Try again. You know, yeah, it's just eight losses. years, eight years. is It's just, it's brutal, man, to work on something for eight years. And this is a result. Like it's fucking brutal. Like I, I, yeah. I really feel bad for firewalk. Like um, to be clear, like this sucks. Like this is a shitty situation. I don't want this game to fail. Um, but yeah. And I think that's another thing aspect too. Um, I don't think so. I think, 
So there's a certain joy with this game being with, with this game failing, right? Yeah. And I think people are misreading the joy, right? Yeah. So I'm not defending people, but we've been as players, we've been bombarded with live service games for like the last 10 years. Yeah. Um just bombarded with it. Right. And we are finally speaking with our wallets saying, we do not want this anymore. Stop giving us these games. Give us real games. Not saying that these yeah. aren't real games, but like give us more tangible, you know, games that are that have some kind of feeling to them. And, you know, they aren't husk of themselves. And I think the players... Uh, the people are cel- that are celebrating like this game's demise aren't celebrating it because the studio itself failed. They're not celebrating the developers failing. They're celebrating that we are finally speaking up with our wallets. We are finally speaking up and telling developers and telling publishers as well, we do not want this shit. And then you have like Wukong on the other side, even Helldivers on the other side of the spectrum, in my opinion, even though Helldivers is a live service game, this is what the kind of games we want. We want games that have some type of feeling, that have some type of um, feeling to them and, and, and passion and everything. When you play Hell Divers 2, you feel the passion of the developers in that game. Like yeah. every single point of that game is like, we want the player to have fun and you know feel like you're playing Starship Troopers or Terminator or the shit, like some shit like that, right? Uh, Wukong, you you know Stellar Blade and all these other games that have been selling really well. You you can see the passion in those games, and it's it's rewarding. Even games like I gotta say it, like Hard Work's Legacy, right? Even though to me that feels like a corporate cash grab, it's actually a good game for a lot of people who love Harry Potter. Like right. like it's a really good game. This is what they wanted, or this is something like what they wanted, and mm-hmm. it's a it's a really well developed game. So, um, I, unfortunately, we, we have other th- side of the spectrum, like sports games, or like Madden and shit. Like, we're not going to get into that. But, like, um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, Call of Duty hasn't been doing as well lately. I mean, Black Ops 6 is doing re- is the reception towards this very well right now. I don't think it's come out yet. It's just a beta that's been released. Um, but, like, uh, it has some type of feel and depth to it or whatever. The people are like, yeah, Treyarch really understands what we want or whatever the case may be. Or maybe it flops. We don't know. We we, we just don't know yet. Um, but um, that I, I think that's where the celebration is coming from. And I think people are purposely misreading the celebration in, in order for clickbait and, and uh, sympathy points. Mm-hmm. And I don't like that. I don't like when people are being dense for no fucking reason. Uh, they're just being oh, really just like obtuse to the situation. Faith, bad yeah. faith way to approach a situation. Yeah. Like, and, and now I have to I have to address the other side of that spectrum, right? I don't like, because I sent you a, a picture of it, right? I don't like the other side of this where people are being obtuse as far as, oh, look at the walk. Th- this game was woke, so that's why I failed. We oh won God. again, boys. <laughs> First we got Star Wars Acolyte out of here. We got uh, Rings of Power out of here. Now we're getting this game out of here. Concord had nothing to do with this, like yeah, nothing totally. to do with that. Hundred percent. Um, it was just it. I even, I can't even say it was a badly designed game. It was just a generic game, and that's why it flopped. You no, know and I saying? mean the character design is is bad for the most yeah. part. Like yeah. it's just not like I, one of the characters. I saw somebody post a picture of uh the fucking uh, you. So there's this. Uh, I don't know how familiar are you are with the the roster, but like there's a character who uses like uh, she uses knives and she's like a ninja basically. Oh yeah, she's but like a she, typical Asian character. Like, well, no, no, she no, 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 no. This is the one. This is the uh, the black character that has like the. Oh. Uh, she has like an afro and she has these like really small sunglasses, like the the small circular sunglasses, sort of like Morpheus style. Yeah. And uh, she's wearing like a red trench coat, but she's like a fucking ninja, like that dual wields knives. And it's like, that feels, they, they don't, <laughs> it doesn't fit right. Like it's, it's, it just doesn't seem right. Like it's, it and, and she, like her character model doesn't really look good. You know, it yeah. could work with the right design, but what they ended up doing just wasn't, doesn't look great you know yeah you know what? that's actually a very good point and i think the reason why street fighter gets away with 
getting away with uh, not claiming wokeness is because they always did their character designs correctly. Yeah. So the, when you're describing that character, it reminds me of a character that's on Street Fighter Six right now. Her name's Kimberly, and she's a, a black woman who's also like a ninja, who's a ninja. She does yeah. ninja type moves and everything like that. But her kit, she's like spray painting and like doing throwing spray cans, and she had like she also has like a like a, a kind of like a, a bebop. Uh, I don't know if you know what b-boying is and stuff like breakdancing. Like yeah. she kind of has that kind of style yeah. with it as well. So it fits within the mantra. Like she's a ninja, obviously, but she's also like in tune with like you know what it is. Like she's not just that typical. Like oh, we're just gonna make a we're gonna make an, a ninja character, but instead of making them Asian, we're gonna make them black this time. Like it's not that right. <laughs> yeah. Like. And then on the That's kind of what it sounds like Concord did. It's like, yeah, yeah we're yeah. going to make a ninja character, but we're going to make him black. And it's like, she's wearing a trench coat. Probably the worst thing to run around in <laughs> imaginable. You know, it's like, okay, you know? Yeah. And then like, you have the like Tekken characters, like we're Raven and Master Raven. Those are like legitimate black characters. And yeah. like, what if it looks like uh, the secret Cisco, and, but he's a ninja. He does ninja moves. He disappears and everything like that. But for <laughs> some reason, it just fits. It just fits yeah. the game because the yeah. design is, is, is like you said, the design is well. Uh, so yeah, I, I agree with that, that assessment, but I don't, I still don't think uh, Concord was like falling into the woke madness or whatever the fuck the case it may be. And, uh, and I don't like that argument uh, that the yeah. game is failing and everything of that nature. I feel like, uh, like, not to get into the woke shit. I'm not going to get into the woke shit. But I feel like the woke shit and like the reason why the Acolyte failed and all these other games and other stuff like that, I always harp on it's not because the characters are black, gay, Hispanic, whatever the fuck it is. It's because the writing of the characters or the design of the characters was actually bad. They didn't focus enough on that aspect of the game or yeah. that aspect of the character. They just put a black character in there and said, hey, look, we have a quirky black character, guys. Isn't that different? Yeah. It's like, that's not what we want. <laughs> like, you know, so. Yeah. Uh, and then obviously, like, Alkalite, they were like, oh, we're going to make Star Wars. This is going to be the gayest Star Wars ever. And it's like, I'm pretty sure that's not what gay people want. Like, if you talk to gay nerds, they're like, yeah, we like gay characters, but we just don't want them to say, hey, I'm gay. Hey, I'm gay. Hey, look, it's me. I'm Spider-Man. And I'm gay. Like, we don't want that. Right. So, yeah. uh, like. I don't know. It, it, it's just minorities don't want that in general. And I think that's that's why I get so mad at the argument when it comes out, because it's like it's a very nuanced conversation and people just people just. Put it up to the woke mob and they're just like oh it's the right. the blue haired liberal in the in the writing room making this character and it's like it's way more than that bro brother like we yeah. don't like the blue haired person in the writing room uh, making that shit when they're yeah. i'm pretty sure there's a black person next to him like bro you don't know what the fuck you're talking about like i'm pretty sure you know so yeah. it's like yeah i, I don't know but well that, so i put a link in the i put a link in the chat uh search for baz b-a-z-z in the article that's the oh, character yeah, I'm talking I see, about. I see it right in there, right there. That's the character I'm talking about. Yeah. And it's like, come on. That is, like, that is a very... She looks like... You know, she, you ever watch Helsing? Yeah. She yeah. looks like... <laughs> she looks like uh, Alucard. She, yeah, <laughs> you're right. You're right. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's fucking hilarious. Oh, my God. <laughs> but that's not what they're trying to get across here, you know? Like, it's... That's... I, I think... This is the key thing, and I think I don't feel like people are keying on this enough. Is that the game's art and aesthetic is just bad? It's I, I think it's that's what's probably killing the game more than anything. It just doesn't look appealing, you know. Um, and I don't know. It's like that's a huge part of a game's um ability to gain players is the way it looks. It's the first thing anybody sees. You don't play the game first; you see it first, you know. And yeah. that's probably the thing that's going to get you interested, you know is that visual design and the way a game looks. So it's like, I don't know. It's like, dude, looking at that character, more, it just, it just doesn't look good. Like, I don't, it doesn't None look of these good. characters actually look good. At they all. really don't. They really don't. I like most of them don't like there. There's like a couple that are somewhat interesting, but like the, the fucking robot is kind of like a, a little bit more unique, but then there's a character that is in a spacesuit with a rocket launcher and it's just like tan. Like it, I don't, what the fuck? Like, what is that? <laughs> you know, yeah, it just it doesn't look interesting at all. Like, yeah. I, I don't know. 
Um, yeah, I mean, I mean, there's a handful of things. But that's to me, that's the main reason why Concord failed. Like, it just doesn't look interesting. When I saw the game, I was just like, at first, I was interested because I thought it was gonna be a narrative driven like co op game. Like, okay, cool, we got another co op game. Yeah. Like. No, it's cool. actually going to be a real arena game. I'm like, yikes! Yeah. That would have been cool, actually. Yeah. But we're gonna make a we're gonna make a arena shooter, arena hero shooter that has story. Okay, all right, cool, interesting hook. I just the fact that it took eight years to make this is it's crazy. I don't know, but um, yeah, I guess we'll see. We'll find we'll see what happens here. I I anticipate the game will be back shortly. Because Sony is not going to want to fund uh, this studio, I believe has like 160 or 170 developers uh, in it, which is fairly large, actually. So um, they're not going to want to be burning money on that level of staff for for this for very long. Um, so I think we'll see this game before the end of the year come back as free to play. That's my prediction. What about you? You you think same thing or? Sorry, my mic was on mute. Yeah, I do. I do. Oh, okay. I was like, did I lose you? You're still here. Like, <laughs> my mic was on mute. I apologize. Okay. Yeah, uh, yeah I, I definitely think the same thing. Um, uh, that staff is. I think the team is talented. I mean, they they definitely have a really talented team and everything of that nature. Um, coming from the accolades that they do have, each person that came from where they came from. Um, mm. so I definitely think they can make a better game. I just think. Unfortunately, this was their this was a dud, and you just gotta go back to the drawing board. Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. All right, let's move on. Ooh, this one's fun. Uh, so Star Wars Outlaws came out uh last week, and uh, it's had some middling reviews. Um, I feel like I feel like some people are being harder on it than uh they're, they're deliberately being hard on it, but um. The game uh, in early access, uh, right when it was coming out, they released a patch and Ubisoft uh, told players, <laughs> uh, hold on, let me try to find the quote here. Um, yeah, they sent an email. They sent them, they sent them basically a message out to all the early access players saying that, um, quote, if you continue on a prior save, you will unfortunately face issues and progress blockers. Um, basically they were telling players that they needed to restart the game, um, because of issues, uh, in the version of the game that was released for early access. And there was a patch, there was a patch on launch day that we're going to fix these issues. Um, basically corrupting people's saves and on un- not, not unpredictably that <laughs> this caused an outrage. People were very upset. Um, and I guess I'll just say first, like, dude, this is. This is unforgivable. Um, I've been waiting for this kind of thing to happen with this whole early access trend um, <laughs> because I mean, I come from a PC background, you know, and I played a lot of, you know, MMOs back in the day, right? 20, 20 years ago. And um, the most common thing about all of them was that they released in a broken state and um, games in general never really got out of this this kind of migrated to console at a certain point when once patching became a thing on consoles that problem migrated to console games as well where they're like oh we'll just fix it later and we'll release the game in a shitty state you know um because uh basically i've been waiting for a game to have these this kind of significant problem because it happens to every game the earlier you play the game the more likely it is you're going to run into these issues paying for early access makes no sense to me no sense Um, at all you're basically you're paying to be a guinea pig and this happens with full releases as well my biggest argument of that is final fantasy 15 that game on release was unacceptable and people want to tell me that it's fixed now well great i played it on release for 60 dollars, and i fucking wasted my fucking time so that's why i hate that game you know um so it's the same kind of concept here is like you release the game in a state that was broken in some way and you sold that to people for extra money like there are versions of the game that are $130 to get the extra access. You know, that is completely unacceptable. Like this should not, this can't happen. This, this kind of thing cannot happen. If I had paid for early access to this game and this happened to me, I'm returning the game. 
Like I'm 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 asking Sony for a fucking refund. I'm not playing this fucking game. I'm like I, I would be out <laughs> personally. So um but yeah, Montreal, what did you think of this situation? Yeah, I'm the one who sent it to you guys. Um I was actually blown away. I've never seen this before. Um, I actually put it in my other group chat, like with the, my my high school friends who are like casual gamers, mm-hmm. and because they got on, they they you know they they you know they just buy shit. They don't they don't know, right? They're like, oh, I yeah. bought the one hundred and fifty dollars version of like two K, so I can play it three days earlier. And I'm oh like, why God. the fuck would you do that? Yeah. Like, well, well, you know, I just want to play it earlier. I think it's worth it. And I'm like, whatever, man. Uh, and I sent this link to him, and I was like, this is why you don't buy games early. And they're like, what happened? I'm not about to read it. I'm like, well, pretty much people who bought the game early, three days early, like y'all like to do, you know, they have to start the game all over again because, they're, you know, a patch came out on release and now their saves are fucked. They have to restart the entire game again. Yeah. I think, like you said, this is totally unacceptable. I, I, I don't understand how they're not being sued for this. This is a, this is class action lawsuit. Material in my in my yeah. in my opinion, um, yeah. it, to me, like you're gonna sue over a save. It's like it's not about the save. Yes, it's about the save actually because that's my time that you just got out, out of me. So I, there, there's time I can't get back. Whether it was five hours, an hour, or sixteen hours, like there that I can't get that time back. And now you're gonna tell me, oh, just replay the game again. Now I gotta experience that whole. Five, one, five, sixteen hours again, and it makes no fucking sense to me. It, 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 this should not be allowed, in my opinion. Like, yeah. Imagine, imagine. I mean, we do recalls, right? And I think the companies pay for recalls. If I, if I'm not. Oh yeah, mistaken. dude. Boar's Head right now is fucking losing so much yeah. money because they have a massive recall going on of all their deli meats. Yeah, exactly. Um, and, and and I think eight people died from that. Four to eight yes. people died from that. Yes. Or whatever. And like, that's crazy to me. Like, now this is nothing. This is not as significant someone died. But like, the principle still stands, right? Like, you released bad meat because you didn't check your product. Be- you didn't check your product before release. Same thing right. with, with Ubisoft. You released a game that you did not check. Or maybe you knew about it. And you were just like, oh, we're just going to fix it later. And it's like, this is what I'm talking about when like players need to speak with their wallets. No one should have bought the early access part of this. I don't even know why people bought a Star Wars game. I mean, to be honest, we haven't had a good Star Wars game in a minute. Like, I <laughs> yeah. mean, I know Jedi Survivor is there. And I, yeah. I still, I that's a 7 out of 10 for me. Um, it's not my cup of tea, but it is a good game. But, um, yeah, like Star Wars in general. I used to be the biggest Star Wars nerd, and like I I haven't checked in with Star Wars at all. So for people to check in with Star Wars and just like pre order like the one hundred and fifty dollar or hundred dollar copy of it, it makes no sense to me. Like when has Star Wars been good in the last four years besides like Mandalorian and the and the yeah. and, uh, Andor? Like when has it been good? So like from all fronts of fandom, and just being a casual person or being even from like the casual perspective, why would you do this? And on the technical side of things, they really, I'm pretty sure they were like, we have to do this. Like, this is the only way we can fix it. But it's like, well, hold on. I want to jump in there because that that's the part of the story that I am highly suspicious of. I, I, I kind of wish or I wonder if anybody decided not to update their game and continue to play to see what would happen, because I'm curious what these blockers and uh what what do they call it um issues and prog progression blockers what do you mean by progression blockers that sounds like an intentional thing you put there like like i (laughs) i don't know because what could be so broken that they would have to do this that they didn't know about it they must have known about whatever it was right so how why did you release the game in this state and that three days made a big enough difference. Like that is really suspicious to me. Like it, it's, it's, it's worth investigating to me. Like it's, it's not something that I think they can easily just explain away and we should all just accept that. Like there's something here that doesn't pass muster to me. Um, cause, uh, 
when you're developing something like a, a video game, like an issue that is so bad that you need your players to re re like like it would break people's saves is not something that should be coming close to your launch day. You know, if you know about it, you know, it's like so. I don't know. I I just would want to know more. I I hope somebody does that. Like plays the game on a like frankly. Um, if I had bought this game in early access and this had happened, I would be pissed enough to refund it. But I would also, the fact that I do this podcast would make me think about, okay, I'm taking my PlayStation offline and I'm going to fucking, I'm going to keep playing the game and just see what happens, you know? Um, because I would be just fucking curi- curious, like what kind of things are broken, you know? Like what broken things am I going to run into that makes it so I can't finish the game, you know? Uh, because that would prove what I'm saying. You know, if there are things that are uh, like bugs of some sort like that, then that's unacceptable in one way but if you're like running into things that are legitimately like are there mechanics that aren't in the game like are there quests that are literally broken like you you straight up cannot complete them you know um that's not the kind of thing that they didn't know about you know it's like that's that that would be intentional that you release the game in a state like that so um i don't know so i don't know maybe i'm being a little too tinfoil hat conspiracy theorist here but uh, I don't I'm not going to give Ubisoft the benefit of the doubt on this one like they're there. This is strange. Um, this is not a common thing. This does not happen very often. You know, um, it's not usual for a game to release a patch that breaks saves, you know? Yeah. Um, and I, I really hope I mean, the fact that that I don't know, I don't feel like this is getting enough. Um, I think so much news came out this week that it's not getting enough coverage. It kind of went under the radar, but this is a huge deal in my opinion. And I think this needs to be talked about more. Um, I think some kind of investigative journalism, Jason Schreier should actually uh, <laughs> look into <laughs> this yeah. Uh, because yeah. How did this happen? Like, I don't know. This kind of solidified that. I mean, I haven't bought an Ubisoft game since Assassin's Creed Odyssey. And we both right. bought that when it was like two dollars on Steam or some shit like that. No, I got it on Black Friday, I think, for like fifteen dollars or something. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I, I got it for yeah. like five bucks or some shit like that um, off of Steam Summer Sale. So it's like that's the last game I bought from Ubisoft, um, and that was years ago. Um, God, that was like six years ago, wasn't it? Yeah, it's mm-hmm. been years. So it's like, uh. The last game I legitimately enjoyed from them, which unironically was made by the same team who made this, was Division Two. Uh, when we were playing a Division, so yeah, that, that, that was that was Um, and that game had problems as well. So it's like, I don't know. I'm just writing Ubisoft off, man. Like they're a terrible company at this point. I think I personally think they're worse than EA. That's just me personally, though. Oh, I like, felt that way for a long time. But I, I'm coming at this from the perspective of a Heroes of Might and Magic fan, and I've just watch them ruin my favorite franchise so yeah um i've never trusted ubisoft i i will never trust them as far as i can fucking throw them you know as much as we talked about last week that here's new heroes of my magic game i am like very tentative on that that is like that is like yeah you're gonna have to prove it to me that this game is good you know like yeah. i'm not i'm not giving you the benefit of the doubt so um and then the last thing on this to your point about the uh, early access is I people you people need to have more self control, okay? You got there is control. There is almost no video game out there that is worth paying thirty to sixty extra dollars for to play for three days before everybody else. There's no game I could think of that I could. I, I wouldn't even do that, that. I, and I, I stand by this. I wouldn't even do that for Monster Hunter. I would just no. Rate. I wouldn't do it for any game. <laughs> Dude, there's no game. I wouldn't do it for Xenoblade fucking 4. I wouldn't do it for Xenoblade Chronicles X2. I wouldn't do it for the game I'm most, the biggest fanboy in the fucking world. If, if Blizzard announces Warcraft 4 and it's going to be the most perfect fucking RTS I've ever seen in my life, it's the best, like, it's the, it's everything I could possibly want for a, for a successor to Warcraft 3. I wouldn't do it for that game either. Just wait three days. Have some fucking patience, you know? What's the three days early in this case? Because if this game came out on a Friday, that means the three days early starts on Tuesday. That is during a work week for me. <laughs> it's like, how much progress am I realistically going to even make in that time frame that I'm going to spend that kind of money? Fuck that. You know, it's like, 
no way, dude. Like, I just just have some self control. It's three days, you know, seventy two exactly. hours. Like, goddamn, the game's gonna be there when it comes out. It's like play something else. There's a million fucking video games to play. You know, you could literally buy a whole other game for that amount of money for what they charge here for the early access. Like, I just told you, Vampire Survivors is five fucking dollars. Like, the fuck, you know? Just yeah, I don't know. So. I, I literally hate the early access shit. I, I think it's just a cash grab. There's no reason to get it. Totally it totally is. I, I personally, I'm not going to stop. I'm going to stop saying that. I think pre-ordering games should be a, not be a thing anymore. Like 100%. There's no reason to pre-order a game anymore. The only, the only thing I could say is open it up like a couple days before the game comes out so people can preload. That's it. Yeah. You know, okay. That's fair. That's the only reason. That's fair. That that's one hundred percent fair. But pre ordering? No. I don't Yeah, pre ordering months in advance, years in advance? No way. No shot. You will never catch me doing that. Like, I said the, I told I said it on the pod. The last game I pre ordered was Mass Effect Andromeda and see how that worked out. <laughs> I think I, I think that was the last game I pre ordered. Never again. Never no, the again. The last game I pre ordered was Damn, what was the last game I pre-ordered? It was Mass Effect 3. That was the last game I pre-ordered. Yeah. No, and 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 uh for preloading, like, dude, you and I both have gigabit internet. Like, there's no reason for me to preload anything. Yeah. I'm, I'm gonna download the game in 15 minutes. Like, I 100 percent preloading thing should be should be a thing because there are people in the boonies that play video games. For sure. No, I'm I'm yeah. not saying take that away. I'm saying for you and I, though, people yeah. like us that have the, yeah, the we don't need internet to speed we have, there's no justification for preloading a game. I yeah. like I literally turn my PlayStation on, buy it, download. By the time I go downstairs and make dinner and I bring it back upstairs, <laughs> the game's fucking loaded. Like exactly. So there's no reason for us, for me and you, I'm never pre ordered again. Like Yeah, I, I, uh, I haven't pre ordered a game. I don't know. I don't even remember the last time I pre ordered. Yeah, that's that's crazy. I don't even think it was Mass Effect three. I think it was something else. No, that would have been twelve years ago, dude. That's crazy. I think <laughs> that it is was a Mass- really lot. I think it was Mass Effect 3. The reason I remember that is because I stood outside in line and there were people dressed up as, uh, like, some people were cosplaying in front of the GameStop for Mass Effect 3. Dude, isn't it so funny to think about that? As I've gotten older, like, I value my time more than that. I'm sure those things are fun in their own way sometimes. Like, you're kind of a part of something and it's just a fun experience to sit there in excitement with a bunch of people. But, like, as an adult now, bro, like, what I would do is... If I wanted the game that badly, I would just go to the store after work. There's no line. They have the copy there. Like, well, you, you know, remember, this is the time where copies would sell out. When Mass yeah. Effect 3 came out, copies would sell out. I, yeah. I remember I tried that. And I had for Halo 3, for example, right? I had to go to like four different stores. And I just went to Target and they had it. But I went to like four different Game Stops. And like, no, we don't have it. No, we don't it have it. It still happens now. It still happens now. But. I remember with Mass Effect 3, I did it through Amazon, and they they got it to me on release day. Oh, like shit. It, yeah. It delivered to me on release day, so I was like, fuck yeah. You know, you know what? I guess this counts as a pre-order. The last thing I pre-ordered was the PS5. That was the last thing I pre-ordered. That's worth it, though, right? That makes sense. That's hardware. That's something that is going to be limited upon launch, like actually truly limited. Um, there's no video game in existence that's ever going to be limited now because if you can't find a physical copy, guess what? You can just go on PSN and buy it or you can go on Xbox Live and fucking buy it digitally. (laughs) There's no limit to the number of copies they can sell. So, (laughs) so yeah, it's just, there's no justification for it. But, all right, um, let us move on. We've been on that for a while. Um, Our next story, another live service game. Foam Stars. This game came I out in February. Completely and forgot about this game. I, I didn't, didn't even know this is this is I didn't even know this was a, a pay to play game. Yeah, but interestingly, uh this game actually has like a decent amount of players still. Like it's still a few thousand. Like it's okay. not totally dead. It wasn't like Concord so it wasn't like Concord that had a hundred <laughs> as of like five days ago. Which is <laughs> insane that it was that bad. But um so Foam Stars uh is going free to play uh square enix announced this on their website with a press release uh, on august 30th it's coming october 3rd it's going to free to play uh on all platforms and um yeah i mean uh there's not much to say here i really just wanted to put this in because this is a live service like baked episode but montreal would this get you to try the game going free to play do you care no not really i mean the game looks like splatoon i just play splatoon (laughs) 
Yeah. Right. Uh, I, th- I think it has like better mechanics than Splatoon, surprisingly. Yeah. Um, and I mean, if, I would I would say this: if one of you guys is like, "Hey, I downloaded it, wouldn't play it with me for like an hour," I'll download and play it with you guys. I wouldn't be yeah. objective. I wouldn't uh, object to it at all. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think ultimately the point of this story is to demonstrate what we're talking about with live service earlier is that um, these games are, they're kind of becoming a dime a dozen and they are all, they're failing. A lot of them are failing. Like this is Foam Stars failing is they're trying to salvage this game. Maybe it will save it. You know, it might, it might end up getting enough players, you know, where you get to 10 to 15,000 concurrence or something. Um, and you have enough people buying stuff that the game survives, you know, and ends up becoming profitable for Square. But um obviously when these games go free to play that's usually a bad sign the game is not doing very well um at that point so um will this game recover we'll see if it doesn't i mean it'll shut down probably in the next six months so we'll probably see that too um ultimately but um but yeah now this game didn't really appeal to me either I, I i don't i don't really like the concept of splatoon it's a cool idea that kind of turns shooters on their head, right? Where the yeah. goal isn't to like kill the other players. It's to like, you know, just like paint the arena. That's a really cool idea. It's just not something that like necessarily appeals to me per se. Yeah. Um, as much. So, um, so no, this game's, I, this game doesn't really appeal to me. Um, Deadlock does. That's the one I want to play, but, um, so yeah, but yep. Foam star is going free to play. Um, all right. Montreal. Let's move on to our final story. Another live service game, this one being canceled. So uh, Amazon's uh, MMO that was coming out of uh, Japan uh, in partnership with Bandai Namco, uh, Blue Protocol, uh, they've announced that this game is being canceled. It is not going to see a worldwide release. Um, They're not doing a worldwide release. The game will be uh, discontinued as of january 18th 2025 so it'll be live until then uh i believe the game is released in japan um so that's why it's sticking around so long but um this game was coming to the west it was going to have a full worldwide release uh it was supposed to be this year but um they've decided not to release it so here's the, here's the quote uh we have joined in a strong relationship with amazon games throughout the development of blue Cro- protocol and both of our teams are disappointed that we will not be able to deliver the game to players around the world. We have worked hard to prepare for the release. However, we have come to the conclusion that it will not be possible to provide a service that satisfies all of you. End quote, which that is a really funny quote. It will not be possible to provide a service that satisfies all of you. Um, Montreal, you were actually interested in this game. I was as well, actually. Um, so I'm a, I am a little disappointed in this. I don't, like care that much i wasn't like chomping at the bit to play it or anything like that but it like looking through these screenshots like it looks interesting you know yeah uh i don't know what that means like what does that mean what do you mean like we (laughs) wouldn't be able to provide the service to you that you wanted or whatever the fuck i think i think they're almost taking a dig (laughs) at their potential player base uh, because there were a lot of this was interesting. There were a lot of gotcha, uh, uh, content creators that were on this game, like very interested in this game. Uh huh. And I don't know what community that brought with it, you know, because uh, those those streamers and and content creators, you know, people who watch them play gotcha games, you know, of course, and that is a very particular community that is not. Um, I would say they're not the most wholesome. <laughs> I don't think they were attracting the traditional MMO players with this game is, I guess what I'm trying to get at. Um, and that brings with it expectations that maybe they didn't want to meet or could not meet for some reason or another. Um, and maybe they realized that people in like globally wanted a different game than they were making and they just didn't see a path to success for it, you know? So I guess so we just have no reason. I mean, I'm reading the article and it, yeah, it's just, it's very vague of why they, they stopped. I mean, I know it was with Amazon studios. Do you think it just doesn't make any sense? I mean, I understand like what you're saying, yeah, but I don't understand. Um, 
why maybe it was yeah maybe it was going to be a gotcha game or whatever or it wasn't going to be a gotcha game but bandai wanted a gotcha game system and they're like no we wanted to make an mmo and the money and servers that need to be spent up aren't worth the the time and effort anymore Mm mm-hmm yeah. That's the only logical conclusion I can come to because it just doesn't make any sense for the game to be this far in development and you just say, nah, we're good. We don't want it anymore. I mean, clearly Even, they just thought it wasn't going to be viable. Like there wasn't going to be... Yeah, it has to be the, the network server thing because even if you... Even if it was... I don't think the community of gotcha people... I know they can be ravenous um, people, but I don't. I just don't see that being the reason that you shut down a game. Well, I don't know. No... I guess what I'm I guess what I'm trying to get at with that is specifically that uh Hoyoverse and a lot of these gotcha games like Wuthering Waves and whatnot have a sta- established a cadence of content release that is extremely rapid. Like every six weeks, that's kind of become the standard in that genre of mm. games. That is definitely not something Blue Protocol was aiming for, nor could they Oh, I see what you're saying. As the yeah. type of game they were. Um and if that's the audience you're aiming at that might be their expectation. And <laughs> when you put those two things together, you probably have a failure on your hands, you know? Yeah, that's true. Um, so that's kind of what I'm getting at is attitude wise as well. They're not, they're not like gotcha players are fucking toxic as hell. Um, in a lot of these games, like uh, gotcha, uh, Genshin impact and shit, but uh, that could be another aspect to it. But yeah, I just, uh, Hoyoverse has done a lot of, I don't know, I, I'm not going to say damage, but they have definitely changed the game with some games like this. Um, this wasn't going to be a single player game. It wasn't necessarily going to be competing with Genshin, but for whatever reason, they were targeting those content creators. I saw this last year when they did a preview um, in the in the West, like all the gacha creators were invited to to preview the game. You know, it was it was weird. Um because that's very deliberate. Like those those people don't get previews to like Black Myth Wukong and shit like that. You know, um, I, I, th- I think they. I think it may have been the fault of marketing and bad research. So it mm-hmm. could have been. This is why you got to get people that are tapped in to the culture of like video games. Yeah, um, right. Because definitely, uh, they probably looked at it as, oh, let's get this guy because he's previewing. Or he's like a really popular content creator for Genshin Impact or uh um what is this called Stardust Rail? I'm sorry. Uh Honkai Star Rail. Honkai Star Rail. Stardust Rail. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's a Sonic level, actually. Yeah, that uh, sounds like one. <laughs> um Yeah, so for Honkai Star Rail. So it's like all they see is the aesthetic, right? They're like, "Oh, we can probably get this because that's the anime aesthetic." But they don't—they're not looking into the actual weeds. Like, right? This is no. We need to get people like Asmund Gold on top of a top of this. We need to get other content creators that actually play MMO. You need to get MMO content creators to to play this game. That's a good not, point. Did he preview it? I think he I, may have previewed it. He actually. may have previewed it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like we need to get those type of people on board. Not you know Honkai Star Rail. Not the you know like you said the gotcha creators because that's, that's not they, the kind of game they were making exactly to be frank like that wasn't this, this was an actual MMO like this was gonna be a real MMO so um because it, it had party based content and like it had the holy trinity of you know tank healer DPS I'm pretty sure um and stuff like that and and what I find weird though is that the game was pretty positively received in yeah, exactly. last year too. That's the thing I'm finding confusing. So it's like it how had to be badly did they blunder, you know? It had to be a business decision between either it had to be the servers. That's the only thing I can think of was the back end shit. The back end shit was too expensive. And I think it's a part of like what you say as well. They Would probably Amazon the be long- supplying that though? Like as I mean, they- a partner? They're partnered with the West, so I'm assuming that's what it. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. Like, um, sorry, I cut you off. Yeah, but like, I think it was another part of it too. Like, maybe they they did see the content thing as a as a another roadblock, but I honestly think it was just, um, 
they didn't see the, the servers. The, maybe the audience wasn't there as much as they wanted it to be. I, I don't know. It's it's just really weird. Like it's really mm-hmm. weird. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I I don't I don't I just can't see. I can understand it being like you know the Genshin Impact thing and the, the wrong crowd and stuff like that. But I really just think it was like server uh thing and maybe the the trend that they saw with Bandai Namco or Bandai Namco was seeing a trend like, hey, we can't afford this because all these live service yeah. games are failing too. Well, yeah, it could just be a reaction to what's happening in the space. Yeah, right? that that could be realistic too. As Bandai is just looking at things and is like, yeah, live service games aren't doing very well. We might need to, we might need to get out of this out of this realm. This might because like uh, Sega, you know, fucking famously canceled Hyenas, which was being done by Creative Assembly. That was going to be a live service game. Yep. You know? Um, they canceled that before before ever even really showing us anything of it. <laughs> you know. Uh, that game had been in development for years too. So it's like, this is just, I think, I think a lot of these companies might like, this might be this trend that's happened in the last couple of years might be companies actually learning the lesson. Like they're learning that, wow, you really need to do something special to kind of break into the space right now, you know? Um, and I don't think that's necessarily going to be true forever, you know? Um, but like, I don't think it's not worth exploring live service, but maybe you need to wait a few, like a couple more years to like really break in, like start developing a game now, you know, in, in anticipation of five or six years from now when you're ready by like 2030, that Fortnite probably is not going to be as popular as, as it is today, I would imagine, you know? Yeah. Um, but that might be a wrong prediction, right? League of Legends is still going strong, you know, fucking 12 years, 13, 14 years later. It's like, uh, so it's possible. Um, but I would imagine like Apex will probably be out of the picture by that point. You yeah. know, you'll, you know, there will be some space. So it's not like it's completely not worth it to go into live service at all. It's just, you gotta, you really have to have a good idea though, for sure. Um, I don't, I don't think like you can't just make something generic. That's like solid, you know, that's not yeah, gonna exactly, work. you know, there's gotta be some hook to it or, some uh some unique aspect to it that other people haven't done before so all right let's move on to our final story uh this one's for me against the storm uh which is the uh roguelike city builder that uh i was playing uh a couple months ago uh came out late last year in december uh they've announced that a dlc first expansion for the game is coming keepers of keepers of the stone is releasing at the end of September on the 26th, so three weeks from when you're hearing this podcast, um, and it is coming with some new stuff. There will be a new race of builder uh, units. Uh, they're going to be frogs, and there a whole bunch of buildings and things are coming with that, including uh, lakes. Like there will be water based stuff within the maps now. Uh, there will also be like ponds. You'll be able to fish. Uh, have your have your guys have your workers fish which is going to be cool um there's also going to be some other mechanics they haven't totally introduced yet coming with it so um i just wanted to mention this because i'm i'm fairly excited about it i don't know if i'm going to play it necessarily right away uh when it comes out but um i was excited by the announcement and i'm happy to see it because this game this game is really fucking good and um definitely deserves the success that it has uh received so far so um montreal as much as i've talked about this game any interest in it does this expansion get you get you interest peaked nah i don't think i'm going to check out this one this is a purely you game <laughs> and that's okay fair enough yeah yeah the, now exactly. one game i am going to play uh is that other that was well, not the same genre at all um just the art style kind of reminded me of it is that uh starcraft lookalike game that i saw on steam I forgot what it's called. Storm Stormforge. 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 Nope, that's not the one. Uh, RTS. Kickstarter. What the fuck was that game? It was Storm something, wasn't it? Stormgate. 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 Yeah. Frost I by saw, Frost Giant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw it on Steam, and I was like, "Ooh, that looks pretty." It's in early <laughs> access, though. It's not like done. Okay. Yet. So, but I'm not. I'm interested in it as well. Uh, certainly, that might be a fun multiplayer game. Yes. Yeah. Um, 
yeah, that game no. looks uh, it looks pretty cool. So I might check that out. Yeah, um, fair enough. But yeah, cool. All right, well, uh, look forward to that DLC if you're a fan of Against the Storm. Otherwise, uh, that's all we got, Macho, this week. Uh, no more news. Uh, I don't think there's any games coming up we really need to want to guess the meta score on. But uh, is there anything else you want to talk about before we head out of here today? Uh, no, that's it for me. All right. Well, yeah, uh, yeah, af- that's right. Astrobot is coming out tomorrow, and that game is uh, sitting at a 94. Yeah, uh, it's higher than uh, Warham- or Warhammer. Yeah, Warhammer 40k, um, which is coming out. Might be the. Yeah, it might be the best. Like the highest rated game of the year, actually. I think it <laughs> like, is, yeah. Like ninety four is insanely high uh, on Metacritic. So, um, game is doing uh, very well from a critical standpoint. We'll see if people respond to it though, um, commercially. So, um, all right, Macho. Well, uh, thank you for joining me today, uh, everybody. If you like this episode, please like the show, review the show, and subscribe to the show on whatever whatever feed you're listening to it on. And please subscribe to us on YouTube as well. If you'd like to interact with us on Twitter, you can do so at iTrap for the Hokage for Montreal. That is the number four, not the word. I'm at Thundernut01, and the show is at the Player's Take. If you'd like to send us a question, you can do so on Twitter, or you can send us an email, theplayerstake01 at gmail.com. And that will be it for us, guys. We hope you enjoyed this episode. We'll see you next week. Bye.